Hello there everybody and welcome back to another live stream of Anecologist Plays where, well I've, I'm of course um, Will and this is Anecologist Plays and we are playing Away the Survival Series so just a little once off stream we'll see how far we get in this game uh, usually of course Nick is with us today unfortunately she is not with us uh, for the stream she is uh, at her mother's home and uh, for now it's just us and we are going to be playing a bit of as I said Away the survival series where we get to play as one of these adorable little critters one of the sugar gliders a type of marsupial and if you've got to ask me probably one of the most adorable little marsupials so we're just going to jump right in we're not going to worry too much about difficulty we're just going to chill with the easy mode because why not i'm not here to be some kind of power gamer <laughs> instead we are going to, be, going to be talking a bunch of ecology as we go along so, yeah, I don't really care about overwriting any progress. We are going to be jumping in. And it's a bit more of a documentary style. There's a bit of narration, as you'll see. And, yeah, let's just see what happens as we head into the game. There we go. A nice quote by Henry Beston. Animals are not, are not brethren. They are not underlings. They are other nations caught, caught with ourselves in the net of life and time. Twenty years have passed since a cataclysmic disaster known as the Shift transformed the earth this planet once a paradise for human beings and animals alike has become a nightmare a swirling vortex of storms fires and eruptions that threatens to devour what little life remains and yet life does remain animals certain indefatigable species have proven themselves able to adapt in ways humans could not All right, so there has been some kind of cataclysmic disaster, and we're playing as this little cute little guy, the little sugar glider, as I've mentioned. This is a Joey, which is basically a little baby, so we're going to call this one Joey, because why not? And uh, yeah, so we've got a whole bunch of little Amanita mushrooms here, Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric. We're going to be nibbling on some of them as we go along. But for now, we are just following our mother, who is up here. At this point, the Joey has, of course, reached the, the age where he can leave his mother's side and... One such species... Here we go. ...is the yeah. sugar glider. Mm-hmm. A small marsupial, unusually adept at navigating this new and treacherous environment. Yeah, so he's reached the age where he can actually explore on his own, but he will stay with his mother for quite some time, with his parents, actually, for quite some time. And we're just going to be following our parents as we make our way up to hopefully a nice little safe spot because these little guys they will be roosting and nesting in little hollows in trees and that's probably where we are heading now ah and nick is popping in just to say we must enjoy the stream thanks dear missing you and uh, i know you're with us in spirit at least no sugar gliders like all life on earth now balance on the brink of extinction their still beating hearts offer us glimmers of hope proof that no matter the challenge life can always find a way. Of course, a bit of a Malcolm quote there from Jurassic Park. Life uh, finds a way. And uh, sugar, glide, sugar Glide is actually, I think, a good species for this playthrough or for this, you know, for this game because they are surprisingly adaptable. They have taken, even in areas where there is some logging that has destroyed parts of the habitat, they are still able to survive. As long as there is a little bit of a natural environment, like they can still adapt. Sugar gliders form powerful hmm. familial bonds. Adults and their offspring protect and nurture each other and cooperate in ways that enhance their chances of survival. But no amount of cooperation mm -hmm. can avert some disasters. There's another sibling of ours. And okay. Oh no! Daddy! And there goes our father. And of course, big storms like this will destroy certain nesting sites, so there is a chance that something like this could of course happen in real life as well. But as I was saying, they are quite, quite adaptable, as long as there's a bit of natural and habitat, they can life, move around. There is hope. Mm -hmm. This young family of sugar gliders is living on hope. With their nest destroyed and their father cruelly taken, 
They'll need every ounce of it to brave the dangers of the wild in search of a new home. Young gliders, or joeys, mm -hmm. sometimes remain with their mothers until they are 10 months old. At only six months, our young glider will need more time at his mother's side to learn the ropes. Every step forward for this joey is a step into the unknown. Mm. His mother and baby sister are the only constants in his life. And his mother has the knowledge and wisdom that come with age. He'll have to follow her closely. He's still young mm -hmm. and has much to learn. All right, so we can, as we go around, we'll of course be catching a bunch of stuff like... No, we can't yet catch. We need to learn how to catch. Okay, we can't catch yet. I was going to catch that butterfly and then we couldn't. <laughs> but yeah, so adolescent little sugar glider, they do, they, the sugar gliders do occur in little families or whole little groups. There can actually be quite a few of them in an, in an area. And one female can have up to two joeys at a time. And what is interesting is that the female... Mushrooms and other succulent okay. plant life not only offer nourishment to the sugar glider, mm. but a path to follow. For where plants thrive, other forms of life can thrive as well. Honestly, not sure whether sugar gliders would go and eat Amanita muscaria here, the fly agaric mushroom. That's generally poisonous. You can see from the bright red colors. That's, yeah, <laughs> not something you should be eating. But our little sugar gliders will be munching on it constantly. But what I was going to say... Well, it's interesting with the female potentially having two babies. Like all marsupials, they have a pouch. Uh, instead of having the young developing for an extended period of time inside the mother's body, they are born a little bit more prematurely, and they then are kept safe outside of the mother's body in the pouch. So outside the inside, actually. So uh, they'll be kept safe. But little sugar gliders will be jumping and gliding, as the name suggests. And if you have two little babies in a pouch and the mother lands, there's a chance they could be bumping against one another. And you don't want that because that's you know, potential damage to the babies. So in the mother's pouch, she actually has a septum or a little bit of a wall, a little skin wall in there that actually separates the two halves. So one joey on the one side, one joey on the other side of her pouch. So that when she flies and land, lands, they won't bump against one another. It's an interesting adaptation that you have in this species because you've got two potential joeys and because they are gliding and it could pose a risk to the little babies. Okay, we can't glide yet either. I was just checking to see whether we can, but no, we cannot. Okay. This is basically the tutorial section where we are learning to jump Jumping. and sheesh, they can jump the a lot. to gliding Whee. keeps the glider nimble and strong. Mm -hmm. Skills he'll need if he's to survive this quickly changing environment. Another little mushroom to eat as we go along. And of course, if you've got any questions during the stream, do feel free to pop it in chat. I will happily answer as well, as good as I can. And uh, there we go. So we've got some bioluminescent fungi here as well. And oh, this past week, I was so excited because last Sunday, there was actually a bit of bioluminescence uh, in the ocean. Yeah, close to where we are. And I was so hoping that we could actually go and see that. So Nick and I drove out the Monday evening to I go and have a look. Though Ooh. small, it has all the markings of the notorious ah. Black Widow. I wonder whether this is actually a Black Widow or more the red back spider. That is basically Latrodectus genus. Same genus as the as the uh, Widow. You can see here again the black with the red. I think this is actually a red back spider from Australia, which is the Australian, well, one of the Australian Widow spiders, Latrodectus genus. So they are very closely related. Uh, we're just going to eat these little berries here as well. Sugar gliders, as the name suggests, they are mostly going for sugary type things. Nectar, resin, those types of things, or tree sap, basically. But they also eat quite a lot of insects, so they're quite omnivorous in their diet, because nectar doesn't really have a lot of protein in it. The must master every skill in his arsenal to thrive. Mm -hmm. And one of his most notable attributes yeah, raccoon. is gliding. He cannot survive without acquiring mm -hmm. this primary skill. But to glide... He'll need strength, and strength comes from food. Mm-hmm. So the narrator here just kind of interrupting me talking about bioluminescence there because Nick and I drove out and we couldn't actually... Uh, well, we went to the beach and I splashed around quite a bit. I was like a kid in a candy store because there was some bioluminescence, but it was very, very, very faint. 
Uh, Nick could barely see it when we were splashing around in the water, but I could at least discern some bioluminescence there. But not as great as I would have liked. But it was something, at least. All right, let's see. We've got some the yellowish fruit, flowers. Despite berries. its dangers, hmm. also provides. Plump cloudberries fruit are chock full of nutrients and tasty too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've got to eat three. Okay, fine, I'll eat three. The tutorial is telling me to eat three, I've only eaten two. There we go. Okay, so now we'll be able to glide. And uh, the, well, all these types of flying, not really, oh, flying as well, bats also have it. This is Saviour Island, mm -hmm. one of only a handful of ecosystems that remain. Its dense forests would once have offered cover and comfort to this young sugar glider, but no longer. The island is now a deadly war zone of competing species. Mm -hmm. The whole bunch of interspecific competition taking place here on the island, yeah? And because it is an island system, no species has the chance to move away. They the actively are competing. The feels most at home in the trees, mm -hmm. and for good reason. The glider's whole body is adapted for the high life of the forest canopy. Opposable thumbs on his hind mm -hmm. feet allow him to clasp branches and perform wonderful feats of acrobatics. Really awesome that they actually tell you that they have got opposable thumbs on their hind With feet, because they do. Membrane, he can defy gravity itself and float on the air like a piece of paper, mm -hmm. at least in theory. <laughs> Alright, so we'll be jumping in a moment. First of all, hello there, it's Arun. Glad you could also make it to the stream. And then Nick, also regarding the babies, they will have two at a time. So they can actually have two, they can have twins, and then each one will be in a separate chamber in the mother's pouch. But as I was going to say, regarding the sugar glider, the, and all flying insects, oh, flying insects, flying mammals, like bats, for example, will also have this flying squirrels also. They've got that membranous skin that in this case is between the front legs and the hind legs and it's known as the patagium or patagia in a plural. And when we fly, when we jump and jump again, oh, okay, I've got a hold, okay. When you jump and jump again, you, uh, oh, okay, fine. I'll just jump down here, thank you. So there we go, there's Climbing the patagium. Easy skill to master. Mm -hmm. This youngster will need more practice to get it right. I will be flying in no time, or gliding at least in no time. This isn't flying, it's falling with style, if I can quote Woody and Buzz there. All right, but the patagium there, the little skin flap between the front legs and the hind legs. And they can actually steer quite nicely by lowering or raising their different legs. They can actually then steer. And for every two meters that they travel forward, they will drop round about one meter in altitude. Okay, so we've officially acquired the gliding skill. And we'll just follow our mother with our sister on her back. Okay. Oh, purple snails. <laughs> okay, I guess we're catching something now. And what better thing to practice on than a slow little snail there we go and now we eat it munch 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 a delicious meal <clears throat> there's nothing like a successful <clears throat> hunt to put the spring back in your step the sugar glider forges ahead with a new vigor okay we've got to maintain our red bar there as well our hunger bar we'll just eat a whole bunch of mushrooms to fill that up and here we go. Quite agile on the ground, but they really do feel more at home in the air. Uh, that's, of course, one of the reasons why they glide, so that they do not have to spend any time on the forest floor. Because it's dangerous down here. Far safer up in the canopies. I suspect soon we are going to be gliding again. The glider has ventured close to the cliff's edge. Mm -hmm. The winds here are harsh. One wrong move could send him tumbling into the waters below, and because gliders can't swim, this would be a deadly mistake. Not sure whether they really can't swim, but I don't think they're very good at the whole swimming bit. So we're going to, of course, try not to end up in the water, because that would be quite bad. We're just going to follow our mother. I suspect we'll have to glide in a moment, because I think we're going to have to get to the other side there.
Okay, jumpy, jumpy, jumpy. You know, the controls can be quite finicky because there we go, we just ended up in the water and that was not very pleasant at all. Okay, I think I can actually just, yeah, right mouse button and left mouse button just to jump. I've got more control over where I jump in that case. <laughs> Don't just jump blindly. Alrighty. The terrain is rocky and inhospitable. Nothing like the smooth tree trunks and sturdy branches the sugar glider is used to. Crags, steep slopes, and sudden gas oh, in the earth a spider. present a treacherous challenge. That was a spider that got me there. So we'll just we'll just stay away from the spiders for now. We are probably going to have to fight some a little bit later on. As we're just going to jump up, 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 and all the way. There's something I can catch. There is something I can catch. Come on, what is this? Something to eat? Possibly. I don't know. I, I think I ate a beetle. Of course, the beetles will be very useful sources of protein for the little sugar glider. But they get most of the energy and stuff like that from the nectar and the raisin that they will be eating. But the, the nectar and the uh, raisin. Well, okay, there is a spider here somewhere, but I think he has fallen through the rock. So, <laughs> But the nectar and the raisin not really rich in protein. So we need to get that elsewhere. We of course get that by eating uh, insects. Oh, this looks like it could be a boss battle. Like thinking uh, of a of a typical Up RPG. Ahead, oh, there we go. Scorpion. Yep. This creepy crawler hmm. wields a dangerous weapon, a toxic stinger that could kill the glider with a single jab. And this striking fiend won't let the glider go without a fight. This gutsy Joey has a battle on his hands. Okay, so we've got to press Q or E to to dodge, and then we've got to counterattack. Okay, that's all right. I'll talk about the scorpion in a moment. And we're just going to try and quickly take, quickly take him down. Things like meerkats are really also adept at uh, taking down things like scorpions and snakes. So why not a joey? Why not a little uh, He's sugar just, glider? Oh, sugar look at that. Glider reigns victorious. Okay. A testament to his rapidly developing skills. With a newfound confidence, he pushes forward toward the next challenge all right so if we can just look at the scorpion over here we've got of course nice big uh, pincers in the front there and a medium-sized tail this would be a moderately venomous scorpion like you would know you've been stung by one of these guys but it's not going to kill you if of course the pincers were quite small and the tail thick then that's a different story and i have seen quite a number of the of those more venomous scorpions in my life Thankfully, I haven't been stung by, by any of the more venomous ones. As I said, this one will most likely hurt quite a bit, but it won't kill you. Uh, but things like the death stalkers of Northern Africa or the other thick-tailed Parabuthus species in Southern Africa, those things can be deadly. And some of them can actually spray their venom up to a meter far, which is a surprise, I am sure, and not a pleasant one at that. But this one, they would be using their pincers, of course, to grab the prey and then sting it. And that, of course, would neutralize the prey, most likely. So if this little Joey had been stung, it would be in for a world of pain. And it possibly would have enough venom to actually incapacitate this Joey. And then to start liquefying it as well. Something tells me that even though it's dead, it was still following me around a little bit there, at least. No, maybe not. But yeah, I have once been stung by a scorpion, but it was one with an extremely thin tail. So really not a lot of venom there. Big pincers. It's one of the rock scorpions we have around here. And I'm just going to eat this one because I can. Uh, and anyway, that one, it, I was lifting up a rock. Or I lift up a rock to... Okay, bye, Mr. Berry Man. <laughs> that's the berry. There he goes. I guess that's a takeaway. Uh, but anyway, I was lifting. I lifted up a rock to try and look for scorpions and stuff, and then found a scorpion. But when I wanted to put the rock down, it would have been squashed. So I tried to move it away, and it just put over its little tail and stung me on my was on my pinky, my left hand pinky, and it itched. That was about it. Uh, I almost died of laughter, but yeah, it was quite quite cool. At least I can say that I've been stung by a scorpion but not one that could kill me. 
Another friend of mine had been stung by a more venomous one, and two months later he would still wake up in the evening with pain. Have powerful instincts that can alert them not only to the presence of predators, but mm -hmm. to the safest paths forward. But instincts are useless if they're ignored. Mm -hmm. The glider must learn how and when to listen to these inner nudges. Finely honed instincts could mean the difference between life and death. All right, for now we're just following our mother because mother is there. We don't have to worry too much about finding the right route. We just follow mother because mother knows best. Okay, let's see here. A crows flying past. Now, generalists like crows would do very well. Uh, I, uh, okay, okay. I'm going to die now. Possibly. Maybe I'll make it. Maybe I won't. Let's see. Uh, uh, okay, I got back onto dry land. Okay, that was not very pleasant at all. Technically, this little uh, sugar glider should be able to climb up a rock face. But mine was not able to. So anyway. <laughs> ah, that was a stupid mistake. Okay, what we're going to be doing is running and then... Uh, okay, uh, why am I doing this? <laughs> uh, I, wa I was playing, an ecologist plays this. Now it's just an, ecology suck an ecologist sucks at this. Come on, I want to catch the beetles. Come on, let me catch the beetles. No, no, okay, fine. I'm not able to catch the beetles. Let's try from this side. There we go. Need to get some beetles to eat. Food, thank you. Food, food, glorious food. Okay, my hunger is alright, my health is alright. Let's try that one more time. I don't know why I sucked at that. I think I'm too eager to actually join my mother on the other side. And then I... There we go. Finally. Third time's a charm. Ooh! That chilling cry bearded vulture. Was by a bearded vulture. Oh. A massive bird that could crush the sugar glider between its talons like a porcelain doll. Hide like mother. Okay. The sugar glider's senses are on high alert. Every instinct in his body tingles in the presence of this threat. Mm -hmm. He moves cautiously, keeping inconspicuous and out of sight. Okay. So the bearded vulture, quite an awesome bird. Most of its diet actually consists of bones. It is one of very, very few animals that consist almost solely on bones. And its old name, one of its old names is Ossi, Ossifrager or something along those lines, meaning bone breaker. Because they have this habit of actually picking up big bones up to their own body weight, like four kilograms. Picking those up, flying high above a flat rock and then dropping that big bone to shatter on impact so they can get to the bone marrow inside or just eat the splinters of bone they most of their diet consists of bones uh, so that is quite a cool bird yeah nick says she wishes we could play this multiplayer that would be quite cool who knows maybe within our lifetime we'll be able to play a game like this multiplayer it would really be quite cool okay so we're going to just dash from cover to cover and hope the bearded vulture does not see us. Now, although it mostly feeds on bones, it has been known to actually knock off uh, things like rock hyraxes and um, all kinds of marmots and all kinds of little rodent type things or smaller mammals, which it then feeds on. So usually what will happen in those cases is that because these bearded vultures usually occur along cliffs, along mountains, they would spot potential prey and then actually knock them off the rocks and then they fall to their deaths and then they'll be feeding on them. But they the mostly is aware of movement on the ground. It could spot the glider at any moment. We'll just Our think... Joey must remain quiet and hidden yeah. if he's to survive. Okay, we're just going to hope that he doesn't come after us, doesn't spot us. They would have quite keen senses, quite keen sight. Oh, and it's right there. It's a beautiful, beautiful bird. I've only ever seen two in my life. Once was a juvenile that flew over quite quickly, and the other one was quite far. Uh, it was January last year. Uh, Nick and I and my dad, we saw one flying very, very far off in the distance. Quite characteristic. It's got a wedge-like tail, or wedge-shaped tail. 
and uh, occurs in mountainous areas. And it's a surprisingly big bird. Really, really a big bird, that. Okay, we're just going to eat a little bit here just to get our hunger meter filled. Come on. Give me the opportunity to eat some poisonous mushrooms. There we go. Okay, it's quite possible that our now little... Avoiding the vulture, Never mind. The sugar glider can breathe a sigh of relief. Mm -hmm. For now. now. Yeah, for now. <laughs> a perfect meal for this family of gliders on the go. The Joey takes cues from his mother, who uses stealth and speed mm -hmm. to stalk these tasty treats. Okay, so we're going to have to try... The lizard is in the glider's sights. Mm -hmm. He must tread lightly. These scaly delicacies are quicker than they look. Okay, we got one. Satiated and energized, the glider is ready for the journey ahead. But his mother and sister mm -hmm. haven't been so successful. Our Joey mustn't give up the oh. hunt. Not until his family is as full and fed as he is. Yeah, this one I know I will suck at because I've got to try and jump and get this little lizard. Ah. Come on, little lizard. There we go. This wriggling lizard will make a fine meal for his mother and sister. No, where are my, there we go. There's mother and sister. It Come on. It is crucial that the family cooperate. There is strength in numbers, but if one of those numbers is weak, the whole family Yay. is at risk. And so mother teaches her offspring to share. Mother always knows best. Yes. Sugar gliders are omnivores. Keen to enjoy all sorts of forest delicacies, from insects to invertebrates, to small birds and wriggling lizards. The forest is a veritable feast for these intrepid possums. So you're calling them possums there? They are relatively closely related to possums. And as you can see there, I am sitting in the darkness once more, because apparently the plugs have had a bit of a short circuit there, and uh, yeah, my lights are no longer working. Uh, so they have cut off cut out completely but thankfully I have uh, next one spare light right here by me so you can at least see half my face I'm feeling like a like a Batman villain over here uh, William Two-Face anyway we are just going to be carrying on here I was actually dreading chasing that lizard because I suck at those types of parts of games chasing down things and stuff like that uh, but we should be able to at least catch this butterfly it looks like one of the Ulysses butterflies, which has amazing blue colors like that. Ah, where's Mother? Mother? Ah, here you are. Hello there. But yeah, the sugar glide is very often occurring in groups. Quite tight-knit groups, it seems. And they are very, very adaptable. But I want to show you something. If we can get another butterfly. Pretty sure I saw one here a moment ago, and it's gone now. Okay, never mind. Oh, when we see one again, I will point out something cool about them. Okay, is mother flying? Oh, mother has jumped down. Okay. Hello, mother. Oh, there's a cool butterfly. Ooh. A storm rumbles in the distance. The glider must move quickly to avoid being caught in its rages. Okay, we'll be moving quickly soon enough. But for now, notice that massive skeleton on the other side there. That is the skeleton of some kind of baleen whale. Quite possibly a humpback whale, although it could also be a southern right whale. I'm not 100% sure which one it would be, but it is almost certainly one of those two. Okay, so mother is over there. Maybe we actually have enough energy to make the jump and glide across. Yes, indeed. That's cool. Okay, but Megalith Valley. Megalith meaning massive rocks. That's what Megalith means. Let's try once more the jump and glide. And there we go. We made it. Okay, we're heading that way. Okay, thanks, Mother. Oh, 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 Almost into the thick bushes there. Don't want that. Is there nothing to fill my stamina bar? Doesn't look like it. But we can fill, fill our hunger bar a bit. Alrighty. Okay. A swinging branch Ooh. attached precariously to a vine. Mm -hmm. For most animals, this obstacle would be impossible to bypass. A fall from this height would be fatal and not worth the risk. 
But the sugar glider is a masterful acrobat and light on his feet. He may succeed here where others would undoubtedly fail. Yes. The sugar glider may be an adept jumper, but I am most certainly not. So, yeah, I'm surprised I got to make, make that make. I'm surprised I made that jump. There we go. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. There we are hitting. Okay. Made it. Wow. Oh, I can scurry up that. Nice to know. Good to know. Okay. Like, come on. Oh, okay. I'm. Um, there we go. Great stuff. The controls are sometimes a bit finicky, but that's all right. I mean, I've played games that are far worse than this. Just keeping our hunger full. And here we are on what seems to be the tail vertebrae of the whale skeleton. It's part of the of the uh, back, at least, of the vertebral column. They would technically be the tail fluke would be located around here somewhere. Don't see it, or we do see some other bones lying around. Maybe it's actually a whole pod that got washed up here during the cataclysm. Okay, we don't want to jump down there. The mother is nothing else in the area. It doesn't look like it. So I guess we're jumping and gliding, eh? This giant skeleton once belonged to a whale. Mm -hmm. The glider has never seen such a thing, and there's no reason he should have. But sadly, the presence of this decomposed carcass so far inland is no mystery. Seismic changes, likely a tsunami caused by the shift, no doubt deposited this unfortunate creature onto the island. The poor beast perished here, unable to return to its watery home. Hmm. What remains a mystery is how sugar gliders, these tiny intrepid mammals, have managed to survive the Earth's upheavals, while so many others have failed. Interesting that they say that it's a mystery, but it's not really a mystery. If you look at some of the biggest... Oh, there goes the uh, Lammergeier, the uh, bearded vulture again. If you look at some of the most significant cataclysms on Earth, uh, catastrophic events, like, for example, the extinction of the dinosaurs, or the non-avian dinosaurs, most creatures above a certain size died out. Only the smaller creatures survived. First of all, because they were either able to hide and be underground in burrows or they were able to escape potentially some kind of catastrophe or the catastrophe you know initially but there were also smaller animals need less food in order to survive so if you are in a very unpredictable environment sure for your if you are small you need more food for your body mass but you need less food overall and smaller animals are therefore more likely to survive after such a catastrophe like we have over here uh, I'm not sure whether all the whales died out. I didn't hear anything regarding all the whales, but I mean, this one obviously died died because it got stranded far away from the ocean. The moment whales get stranded, they are pretty screwed. Okay, so we are heading over there. Okay. Good to know. Can we make it? Can we make it? Yes, we can. I'm aware of the mystery surrounding his existence. Mm -hmm. The glider explores, taking in the strange sights and smells. By necessity, our glider is active during the day, though they are usually nocturnal. Mm. He'll have to use every instinct available to him to survive this strange and hostile landscape. We're just going to be eating a whole bunch of stuff here. Just so that we can stay nice and full. Okay. But yeah, so what we've got up there is a nice little orange butterfly. Orange with black and white. That is most likely the monarch butterfly. And the monarch that we have in this game. So this game most likely is set in Australia, which is weird because we have got the bearded vulture flying around here, which doesn't occur, which occurs nowhere near Australia. We've got a population in South Africa. Then we've got scattered throughout East and Northern Africa. We've got some. Then we've got in Spain and Portugal and over to the Pyrenees and over to Asia. We've got them, Iran and places like that. We don't have them in Australasia. Uh, but it's set in Australia, this game, because we've got the little marsupials here, the little uh, sugar gliders, which are only found in Australia and Papua New Guinea. Uh, that's where you'll find them. And the monarch butterfly that we've got here, you can see kind of the orange, black and white here. There we go, right over here next to me. That is most likely the North American monarch butterfly species. And it is actually an invasive species in Australia. So there are some almost call them feral population. There are some invasive populations of them out in Australia that 
went that uh, went to Australia through anthropogenic means by humans, you know, bringing them in, keeping them as pets, releasing them, and then some populations started. Oh wow! I can't believe I made that jump. And some populations established, and they are of course toxic. They are poisonous, as they are trying to show here with their bright colorations, as it now has flown off. There we go. There it is. With bright colors like that, a posematic coloration. Yep, it is most likely poisonous. We as a sugar gliders should technically not go for them. I'm not sure whether we can actually eat them in the game, but we shouldn't eat them in the game. At least we shouldn't eat them in real life if we are little sugar gliders. Oh, oh okay. I've got a suspicion I'm going to fall into the bramble or whatever is under us here. This thorny plants that we've got here. All right. I can see it is quite a prickly thorny plant we have here really should avoid landing in that and i can almost guarantee you at some point tonight i am going to fall into that and possibly die ah oh, this looks like new zealand flax no you know what no this is this is a grass palm or something along those lines or grass tree it's a type of plant that is only found in australia it's uh, quite unique to Australia, as far as I recall, this weird plant we've got over here. It is actually in the aloe family, Asphodelaceae, now that I come to think of it. It is quite cool. Love seeing them. And uh, just again showing that we most likely are in Australia. Okay, Mother is over here. The clever glider turns a log into a vessel. Okay. A little innovation mm -hmm. goes a long way on this island. There's a big fish there. Really should avoid being eaten by them. <laughs> of course. Okay. Not sure what fish they are, but we are going to avoid finding out. Now, with our... Even though we are quite lightweight, we are not... Oh, 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 okay, I'm going to drown. Come on. There we go. Come on. Ooh. Okay. Made it. A cluster of spiders attacks. Oh, no. With their superior numbers, they could easily overwhelm the sugar gliders. And Mother is just standing there being bitten the butt. Now, listen, guys. This is not, not nice. We are going to take you out, okay? Come on, leave mother alone. Leave me alone. Insect and arachnid populations have risen precipitously since the shift. Many of the animal and mm -hmm. avian species that would have kept their numbers under control have been wiped out. Aggressive arachnids in competition for their own survival are an ever-present menace to sugar gliders and other small mm -hmm. animals on the island. Come on, why are you biting my mother? Come on. Instead of attacking the spiders, my little Joey has just attacked all the mushrooms in the area. <laughs> okay, potential nest site for us. Okay, great stuff. But we've got to protect it against all the spiders, I assume. There we go. Hello, spiders. Not sure what spiders these are. They're not the funnel web spiders that I know because they are in a completely different group. They're in the Mygillomorpha. And this is one of those... Or well, these are some of those typical spiders. Jaws that actually... Close sideways rather than you know, up down. Guess we'll talk about that at some point when we see a Mygalomorphe spider. Go on, just leave us in the nest, okay? I think mother is yeah, mother is being attacked by one. Are we? No, we're not done yet. Okay, go on and go away. I hear them. Hello. Oh, the nest is infested. Okay, I should actually go after mother. Ah. Okay. Here we go. Following mother away from this nest. We had a nest and unfortunately we were overran by spiders. But yeah, invertebrates would do very well in this cataclysmic setting because they don't, you know, they, they slow. They've got uh, the ectotherms, they cold-blooded animals. They don't need to use any energy to maintain their body temperatures. Unlike our little marsupials over here. Our little uh, sugar gliders. And now my mother is sick. The habitat of the sugar glider has changed dramatically since the shift. Driven from the trees by torrential storms and forced to adapt to life on the forest floor, 
these tiny marsupials have shown remarkable resiliency. Where larger, brawnier animals have failed, mm. sugar gliders continue to survive and adapt in ways that remain mysterious to us. Okay, so we are here, I guess, over here. And this is what? Butterfly? I don't know. I guess I've got to travel to there. Let's see what happens at Butterfly. <laughs> and while we're doing it, of course, some coffee. Okay. Butterflies, a feast for the eyes as well as the stomach. These fluttering insects will make a hearty meal for our young glider. And of course, Memphis has to say hello to everybody. Hey, Memphis. He just wants more food, though, so he is kind of upset that I'm actually picking him up. Come on, little one. <laughs> Memphis, you are too big. You are battling against yourself. Come on. Here we go. Okay, we've got to catch two pink butterflies. Now, they appear to be some kind of swallow, swallowtail or Ulysses butterfly. We'll see whether we can actually catch one just quickly. Well, in a moment, there is one right up there. Uh, it's a little bit too high for us. Okay. Let's just fill up our own hunger bar here. Or well, food bar at least. And then let's see. Alrighty. No, Memphis, there is food in your bowl. You can eat that. You don't have to come and beg on screen for everybody. Let's see. We need the pink butterflies. So, let's just quickly check. There are a whole bunch flying around here. There's a snail. May as well go for a snail. That can't run away from us. Eat some mollusks. Uh, interesting, the mollusks here. I'm not sure whether they, how much they would actually eat in the, you know, in real world. But that would be a nice source of calcium. In their, in their shells, for example. And in, if people keep these sugar gliders as pets, they actually very often develop a calcium deficiency, which results in a loss of their, well, their bone strength. Because the uh, body of the sugar glider, if it starts feeling that, okay, Remarkably, oh, the glider catches I caught one. butterflies, but does not eat them. Huh. Instead, he stores them for later. Okay. I honestly did not even mean to catch that one in the air, but I did, apparently. <laughs> but as I was trying to say, the sugar gliders, what will happen is that they... If they have a calcium deficiency, the body starts taking calcium from the bones. In essence, weakening the bones and then resulting in them using or losing the use of their bones. So they, what often happens then is that the, they, became, they become lame. They, they can't move anymore. And that's simply because people are not feeding them the right things. And it's one of those classic cases that sugar gliders really shouldn't be kept as pets. They really should just remain outside in the wild where they can get their food and everything they possibly need. But people do tend to keep them as pets. Like, I'll be honest, they would be adorable pets, but really shouldn't be taking or keeping these little guys as pets. Still trying to find a nice, juicy pink butterfly. We need a second one to complete the quest. I guess they're all to that side now. There we go, there are a few there. Okay, apparently I got two. Got one in the air there. Huh. Uh, return to the tunnel, there we go. And in we go. Okay. I guess we're going to have to go take some food to our mother now. Try and give her some strength. Extraordinary. <laughs> the glider has fed the butterflies to his mother, who now appears to be recovering from her spider bite. There is no reason a butterfly should provide an antidote for spider venom, and yet... It appears to have done so. Is it possible the nectar or pollen the butterflies have been feeding on contain some hidden properties we are as yet unaware of? And how did the sugar glider know that this antidote would do the trick?
<laughs> the weirdest thing is currently happening. I have unplugged my lights, but both are flickering at the same time. Okay, I think they have now officially stopped. <laughs> right, so there is, of course, no reason why the sugar glider would know that this would be an antidote for the spider bite. And if this were to ever happen, it would most likely be a coincidence. The sugar gliders, most marsupials, not very good with the thinky thinky bits in the brain. Uh, unlike, unlike humans, they don't have that, they've got relatively smooth brains. They don't have all the wrinkly bits in our brain that we have that gives this us more cognitive function. a beautiful but dangerous challenge. Its splashing waters threaten to throw the gliders off course while drenching nearby nooks and crannies in slick liquid. Mm hmm. Another bit of a jumping challenge for Will, at which he will most likely suck. Okay, well, we jumped onto the log, thankfully. Saviour Island is home to a wide variety of bioluminescent <laughs> fungi. These glowing mushrooms, nature's nightlights, help guide the sugar gliders on their way. A complex relationship seems to exist between the gliders and these mushrooms. Sparkling sprouts that provide food, illumination, and perhaps, as has been theorized, something more. Of course, there's a whole bit of, in this, in this game at least, it's not 100% you know, factual. There would be some kind of, um, first of all, anthropomorphizing of the animals here, giving Despite them human qualities. The young glider pushes upwards towards the open air. And also at the same time, I mean, things like these, maybe there could be some kind of relationship between the fungus and the little marsupials here, but it will be very difficult to kind of prove that. But then again, this is a game and it is supposed to be mostly just for fun rather than a pure educational tool, but we, of course, are using it as an educational tool. Uh, you know, once we can figure out how to get the off the log. His family are finally back on solid ground. Yay. Now, on to the next challenge. Mm hmm Okay. Surely we should almost be full. There we go. Okay, just trying to get my hunger bar full so I don't have to eat the whole time when we on the road. Okay, that's it. Right, what now? What's next? Follow mother, I guess. Okay, if I run, she runs. Nice. Go, mother. We're going. Alrighty. And again, bright colors here with the opposing coloration this of the monarch. Is dominated by Ooh. a skulk of foxes. These ravenous omnivores would love to have our family of sugar gliders for dinner. The gliders will have to be quick and quiet if they want to avoid being on the menu. All right. So what we have here are again the red foxes, which are from Europe. So the European red fox, they are invasive in Australia and probably one of the most significant invasive species in Australia. They've been responsible for quite a few marsupials going extinct. We're just going to run for cover here. Mother has the right idea. Darting quickly from hiding spot to hiding spot right under the mm -hmm. fox's noses. It's a risk, but it works. The thing is, the foxes would also have amazing sense of smell. But they most certainly would know that we are here. They would be able to smell that, oh, there's food in the area. Let's, let's go for that. And there she goes. And here we go behind, right behind Though her. foxes hunt, they are also skilled scavengers, adept at locating and then feeding on the decaying carcasses of other animals. Mm-hmm. Many, many, many predators would also take uh, carrion if they have the opportunity. Why risk your life to catch food if you can just take it, you know, when it's already dead? All right, let's eat while we are here. All 
Over time, the dead have become more plentiful than the living. Mm. Scavengers have come to dominate the island. But this imbalance cannot last forever. Eventually, food will run out for the scavengers as well. The future of life on Earth depends on whether small mammals like the sugar glider can find a way to rebound. Now, the nature will always find some kind of balance. Uh, over time, of course, as the narrator there says, the, the superabundance of carrion eaters, of scavengers, will result in there not being enough food for them. And so they eventually will just kind of drop in number. Until, uh, you know, later on, again, the food becomes plentiful, either through smaller animals that they can prey on. And, ooh, there are, there's a nice bit of sap here for us to eat that's going to fill up our stamina bar our yellow bar Good quite nicely reunion. together once more the sugar glider family enjoys some much needed rest been together the whole time oh no the vulture returns its arrival is sudden leaving the gliders no time to hide or even react there is little chance of survival a oh no reality of life on this perilous island okay there goes the vulture and well technically that would work to kill something perhaps not a sugar glider but most things would die if you drop them from high so what this vulture could do is it could actually pick up something a prey animal and then fly high and like it does with bones drop this it from a height glider is resilient more resilient than any of us could have expected but the loss of his mother and sister has affected him deeply the poor joey cries out his unique vocalizations expressing his sorrow, but also sending out a signal to his mother and sister. He is alive and will be coming for them. Oh, that's a violent punch. Okay, so that's what I meant with anthropomorphizing it, giving it human characteristics, uh, emotions and things like that. Whereas this little sugar glider would, of course, you know, be in some kind of stress due to the fact that its mother is not with it. And it is pretty much reliant on its mother in order to actually survive. Now he has to go all on his own. Okay, but as I was saying, the bearded vulture could pick up something and then drop it from a great height and thereby killing it. But in this case, the little Joey able to just survive by just you know, dropping to the ground. Okay, we need to find out, figure out which way to go. I suspect perhaps up there. Because there's just a bunch of red. We can't go there. Which really just leaves this there's no time to lose. The as the root. The glider's mother and sister are in the clutches of oh. the vulture, the lower their chances of survival. The Joey bounds forward with a new determination to reunite with his family. Hmm. A peculiar relationship exists between surviving species like sugar gliders and the fungi native to Saviour Island. The fungi seems able to influence these animals in ways researchers have yet to fully comprehend. It's as if an enhanced evolutionary process is at play, one that both strengthens these animals physically and heightens their instincts. Researchers have dubbed this phenomenon fungi symbiosis and hmm. continue to explore its effects. All right, so symbiosis basically just being when two species are in a close relationship with one another it could be mutualistic as is likely the case here between the sugar glider and the fungi or it could be parasitic which is most likely not the case here Re regardless we have found a way down we just kind of you know jumped down and here we are and now we're just trying to find our way to our mother who is somewhere i guess to that side and along the way, we're basically just following the trail of fungi. When two opposing currents clash. In this case, two low-lying rivers oh. forced together by seismic shifts. This watery obstruction presents a potentially deadly challenge to the sugar glider. Okay, but we are going to just try and... Jump on there, come on. Should be able to jump onto this. Yeah, there we go. Jumping onto this one. And I guess we've got to wait for the other log to come along and then we can jump onto that. Or we should actually just be able to jump off here. Our first stop coming up. There we go. A wealth of amphibians live in these dank caverns. A hmm. bona fide feast for our young glider. 
I don't see any amphibians to eat. It would be a whole bunch of frogs here. Most likely some species that are specially adapted with their tadpoles able to survive in fast flowing water like we've got over there by the waterfall. And in South Africa, for example, we've got ghost frogs. They are very well adapted with their tadpoles having kind of a flattened head so that the water just kind of flows over them. They've got very strong sucker-like mouth parts which allows them to remain in fast flowing water, like remain on the rocks in the fast flowing water. Okay, I guess that away, yes. Okay. Oh, almost jumped off in pursuit of food. I'm just going to glide over here. There we go. And the rest of the time, just jump as much as I can. Just some normal jumpings. All right. Ah, cockroaches. That'll be a nice snack. There we go. Come on. Where's the cockroach? I want food. Okay, now I don't know where it is. It's gone. I've lost my food. Oh, well. Fine. We'll carry on. Okay. Something tells me there's going to be something to fight up here again. Sure looks like it. Maybe spiders? Hmm. Maybe a snake? Oh, okay, there we go. Snake. King snake. Huh. This species Not venomous. There we go. Still dangerous to our joey. One of its favorite mm. foods are small mammals like sugar gliders. The joey will have to battle his way past it. Okay. Right. So, first of all, red, black, yellow, and white. That's a quite a vivid pattern. Okay, quite a vivid color that we've got there. And that is, of course, a in this case, it's actually mimicry. Because it isn't a venomous species, but it is trying to look like a venomous species, like a coral snake or something along those lines. Uh, which also has black, yellow, and red in color. It's also that those colors. So this one that's non-venomous, trying to look like a venomous species, is what we call Batesian mimicry. And it is a very, very interesting occurrence. So... The idea is that it is trying to, anything that would think, okay, this is a nice snake to eat, would think twice because they may have experienced the coral snake, which is venomous. They may have experienced the hurt associated with being bitten by one of those. And in this case, the coloration works quite well, but the narrator told us this is a non-venomous species. And being a non-venomous species, it would be a constrictor. So it will be grabbing us and then wrapping its coils around us to try and uh, try and get us. Oh, okay. Keep dodging until the snake is stunned. Okay. Okay. I should I should have dodged that. I did not. <laughs> okay. We are also hungry, so I'm just going to eat something here. I don't know. Geez, this little this little sugar glider goes through food so quickly. So let's just quickly grab something to eat here. Cockroaches, come back here. There we go. That's a nice meal. That's a nice bunch of protein for us. That should last us. Let's go back. Let's face this king snake once more. Mr. Snake, we are back. There he is, still guarding. Okay, so we've got to come past here. Aha, aha, no. Yo, and attack. Okay, punch it. <laughs> Oof. Okay, roll and roll. That's what we've got to do. Come on, and bite it when it is stunned. Ooh, that was close. Oh, okay. I should have actually attacked it. Oh, it should almost be An done. There we go. Wow. Okay, right, so let's talk snakes, right? And most reptiles, very, very well adapted to more arid regions because, of course, their eggs are encased in a nice hard covering, which means they don't lose water, unlike amphibians. And uh, they're also being covered in scales, means that they are quite resilient when it comes to scratches and stuff like that. So they can live in drier areas with sharper rocks, more thorny plants, and they can move amongst those with relative ease. Unlike a frog, for example, with a nice fleshy skin, soft skin, 
they are more sensitive to abrasion and to cuts and stuff like that. <coughs> Sorry about that. So uh, let's, since this is a non-venomous species, let's eat it. Can we eat it? Come on, I want to eat it. Give me food. No, apparently we can't eat the snake. Ah, I so badly wanted to eat that. Anyway, here's some berries for us to eat. Let's eat that. Okay. from the bowels of the earth sends rocks and streams of water pouring into the gulch. This glider must use all his skills to quickly reach the ground level before the rising water does. Okay. I would most likely suck at this, so let's try, however. Apparently the water is right on my tail. Okay. So we are in grave danger here. Have to run as fast as possible. I don't like timed events. Oh no! There we go. Oh, wow. That was close. Okay. Timed events I really do suck at. Hilltop Canyon. Okay. Vulture. Oh. Against all odds, the glider has managed to track down his flying nemesis. His mother and sister still dangling helplessly <coughs> from its talons. Time is of the essence. Hmm. The glider can only hope that his family lives and that somehow he can find a way to rescue them. If we're being honest, I think his mother and sister has already been eaten, but we're going to be holding out some hope there that they are still fine. But if I were the vulture, I would already have dropped them from a great height, stunned them and eaten them. But let's hope he hasn't done that yet. As we try to find our family. Oh, gas can over here. It appears to be a part of what? A an aeroplane? A helicopter, some kind of massive vehicle. Let's see. This should be a nice place to cross, nice and shallow it seems. Since we can't swim, we need to look for, for shallow crossing places. And I suspect my little guy is hungry once more. Oh no, not really. Okay. Why are you just running? I think, wait, let's, let me use my, my instincts. It is actually showing this way. Ooh, what's this? A storm is coming. The young glider has ah. seen many storms in his short life, too many, and knows the devastation they can cause. He will have to move quickly ah, to avoid being caught in the deluge. Yeah, run away. Let's see, what happens if I... can I eat these flowers? Ah, I can get attacked by a spider apparently. Come on, I want to eat the flowers. No? Okay, I can't eat the flowers. Ah. Ah, poo. The thing is, as a little sugar glider, we would be drinking nectar in any flowers we can get. And we would, in this case, be punching any spider we can get our little paws on. And then eating any beetle we can also find. Nice source of nutrients. Okay, I think... Oh, there's a whole bunch of spider webs on that side. The presence of cobwebs can uh -huh. only mean one thing. This is spider territory, and the glider must be on high alert. Oof. Okay, we're just going to jump up here. Oh, nice bracket fungi over there. So here we are, just climbed past. Whole bunch of old bracket fungi. Quite woody species, or woody group of fungi growing out from the bark. So the fungal body is actually in that tree stump, slowly but surely decomposing it. And then when time is right, like after rainfall events, you'll have them pushing out their little hard fruiting bodies. We're just going to be attacking all kinds of spiders that we can get. Okay, apparently I can now do epic damage. Ah, there's a rat carcass here. We can't eat it. Yes, I did try. Come on, I want to jump over it. Thank you. Jack jumps over the dead rat stick. Okay, and a whole bunch of fungi again. Little mushrooms. Again, fruiting body just pushing through the dead wood here. And the rest of the fungus, the actual body of it, is slowly but surely creeping within this rotting log. And slowly but surely just decomposing it from the inside out. 
Okay, now the fact that we have got cobwebs can only mean one thing, and that is that we are going to face some kind of spider soon enough. So if you are arachnophobic, you may want to come back in um, like 10 minutes, probably. <laughs> Yeah, okay. We're just going to be taking out a whole bunch of spiders and eating mushrooms and berries as we go along. Oh, come on. Take out everything as we go. Alrighty. Hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking this. This feels treacherous. <clears throat> This quick darting and oversized tarantula would like oh. to make a meal of our journey. Well, he's already making a meal out of me. Will have to be quicker still. Okay, so I've got to run. Can't fight this one. We just run from this one. Okay, good to know. There's another death. You know, let's chalk it up to experience and keep on running. Okay, we must now be ready to run from this. Tarantula species. The tarantula is some kind of mygalomorph or in the mygalomorphae group, this which our species. This oversized tarantula would like to make a meal of our joey. To survive, the glider will have to be quicker still. Okay. Are one of the few creatures able mm. to flourish since the shift. Insect populations have been out of control since many of the species that once fed on them have gone extinct. Spiders have <laughs> moved in to fill the void. Sheesh. That's a big spider. That's a very big spider. Not sure what supersized spider this is. Doesn't look like any tarantula I know at least. But it could be I guess. But I don't know it as. Know that species. Okay we're just going to be gliding as much as possible. Come on. There we go. Nice boost for us there. Oh, oh no, why? Okay, I don't know. I my mouse did weird things there. Sorry guys. Another death. Let's try that one more time. I don't like the fact that my mouse that's a problem with having a uh, wireless mouse. Sometimes it just does weird things like that. So we'll see whether <laughs> whether this time around it goes better. Okay, there's the bearded vulture once more. Okay, we, I guess we're following it. And at the same time trying to land on the log and voila! We have reached the log. I can't believe we landed on the log there. Just going to jump onto this log because I think we have to. to avoid that rock over there. And I suspect we're going to have to jump off. Yes, we are going to have to jump off. Okay. Off we go again. Little uh, glider with the potassium, the potagium, the little membrane. Oh, uh, okay, we are hitting the rocks. That's not nice. Oh, okay, my game lagged there. Okay, but here we go. Okay, we're making it. We're making it. We're still, still getting somewhere. That's a nice glide, that is. I suspect we've got to land here. Okay, wow. Okay, we made it. Now. I don't want to... Oh, okay, we caught a dragonfly. Odonata. Just going to eat this. I actually wanted to talk about the butterflies. Which we have got here. There we go. Come on. Give me the butterfly. There we go. Okay, a little, little bit difficult to see. Okay, I'm going to eat it in that case. But on its tail, it actually has little... Little bits sticking out. And that is a defense mechanism. The idea is that a predator will actually grab that. Uh, potentially, rather than the actual wing of the butterfly. Really an amazing adaptation, and we'll talk about it when the we see it again. Stops on an abandoned human edifice. Hmm. Nature continues to reclaim what relics humans have left behind. Though, curiously, some structures appear less vulnerable to nature's encroachment than others. Hmm. It is almost as if these structures are somehow being maintained. Okay, so that could actually be quite a nice, nice nest site for them. Quite a safe spot for the bearded vultures to have a nest there although I don't think this one has made its nest up there it may just be finding a place nice little place to roost okay let's see where do I need to go I need to go 
up there somehow okay do I need to go I guess up there yes um, let's see whether I can end up here I can okay can I jump up here I don't think I can jump up here no okay so that's not the way I wonder whether we should I think we should climb up there that's probably the way okay little sugar glider let's do this shall we uh radio way to I think that side somewhere so probably uh okay landing in the water not a good idea there we go okay so what I wanted to show you oh okay we are going to die okay if we don't jump I wanted to show you the butterfly and then we were fighting for our lives so never mind I think we can jump this side the glider must find a way to scale these ruins how else is he to track the vulture nice and the rest of his family? Okay. Thankfully the roots here. Nice way for us to climb up. And now... Where to? Can we jump over there? That's the question. I don't know whether we can. We should be able to make it to there. There we go. And then I guess, yeah, onto this. Slowly but surely, we're making our way up. Up, up, and away we go. Alright. So this is basically the story that we are playing, but there is also an exploration mode where you can play around as different animals. You can basically possess different animals. You can play around as a frog. You can be a cat, apparently, as well. You can be all kinds of little creatures. And then just kind of, if you are playing a flying species... Oh, a mantis! Okay, hey, mantis? No, no, stop it. There we go. Okay, so, mantis, of course, would most likely, like, a mantis this size would surely be able to go for a little uh, sugar glider like this. We're using those very nice big claws that it has in the front there, the raptor raptorial... Uh, legs to grasp the prey animals and then you know impale them and kill them and then start munching on them very very good eyesight in this case however yeah it it died we were able to to actually uh, kill it quite easily there is also a nice green one here now this one would be more camouflage it is also smaller uh, and being green it would be relatively well camouflaged but we still killed it nonetheless perhaps uh, accidentally when we were going for the big one, but we still got it. Okay, so we are supposed to go somewhere to that side, I think. I'm not sure. He's telling me we should go there somewhere. Where does it want us to go? Okay. I think we jumped onto those. Yeah, we climbed up there and then we jumped over to this side. So, oh, okay, almost rolled off. There's the bearded vulture. I wonder whether we are supposed to just fly across to the other side. Something tells me we are supposed to do that. Okay, let's, let's try that, shall we? Possibly. Oh, no, not, not through the water. Not through the rain, I guess. Okay. Well, we may die. Yeah. Come on. This is quite bad. Quite bad, I say. Oh, come on. Any moment now. Okay, sure. Okay, we got out. Not supposed to fly through the waterfall. Of course, it is going to knock us out of the sky and we're going to fall to the ground. But here we are. We are fine. We made it down. Ah, deer. Now, I was initially quite surprised that there are deer in this game, and then I realized that was a poison dart frog. No, that, that's, a, that's a salamander or a newt, never mind. I just saw the black and yellow, I'm like, is that a poison dart frog? But anyway, I was quite surprised by the fact that there are a deer in the game here, and then I realized that, no, in Australia, deer are also a 
highly highly invasive species and quite a bad species at that there are actually i think five or six deer species that are invading australia so it makes sense that they would be in the game i'm actually not sure what deer species this is but it is obviously one of the invasive ones and we are going to just be using it to catch a lift catch a ride as we make our way so the these were both bucks oh there's a is most likely a salty oh why why okay i was supposed to drop off the tree hey anyway there's a saltwater crocodile walking along there you can see oh there they are there's more than one okay 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 um we are going to jump into this tree hopefully there we go that's nice and safe and there's also some resin over here for us to just enjoy come on give it give you the opportunity to eat it any moment now ah there we go finally got to eat it and some more resin i do believe the little mushrooms are again showing us where we should go and there is also a line running up that tree over there that we can see so it's probably telling us aim for that tree so we're going to aim for that tree and glide over and the gliding is a very useful way for the little sugar gliders to actually make their way across from one area to another it uses less energy and is far less dangerous than climbing down walking on land and then climbing up another tree it's much better for them to actually glide from one tree to another now interesting that it's showing us that we should be going this way i don't know whether we should but let's find out most likely we are supposed to head yeah to that tree oh and hopefully not be eaten by the salties that are lying over there because notice there's a nice big saltwater crocodile there and i suspect there is another one walking around here somewhere that would most likely love to go for a little sugar glider nonetheless we are going for that tree over there come on safety oh we made it and you can see as we glided using our little legs our front legs to actually steer lowering the lowering the left one uh, making it lower than the right one and by that in that way steering to the left or the other way around lowering the right front leg to then steer right okay now there is a bit more resin up here tree sap i'm just going to quickly nibble on that hopefully come on there we go all right now where to that branch apparently i think let's see okay come on as i said the controls are a little bit finicky but we are just going to be making our way down now i think when climbing down like this the opposable thumb on its hind feet interesting that it's the hind feet that has it not the front feet uh, but the hind feet with the opposable thumb that will most likely give it quite a bit of grip and although i can't really see it in the design a little bit difficult to see if i I should be able to go into photo mode to actually have a look here. Yeah, they don't seem to have it. Or do they have it on the front feet? I think it's supposed to be on the hind feet. It's something I really... No, they don't have it on the front feet either. But on the hind feet here, apart from that opposable thumb that is there, they should actually have had the two... The second and third digits are f almost fused with one another, semi-fused with each other. And that, along with the opposable thumb, provides quite good grip, especially when climbing down the tree. Okay, so interesting that they didn't have that bit of the anatomy correct of the of the little sugar glider. Okay, well we are going to come on, climb up here, head onto this branch. There we go. And the idea now is to aim for that tree. And again, land and climb up. Follow the little white markings on the tree. Going to be the easiest way, I think, to get from point A to point B or get where we need to go. And there's another tree that we need to aim for. Anything below us? Yeah, there's a saltwater crocodile right underneath us. Two. Two to be precise. Okay. So, important thing here is for me not to drop down. And hello there, suddenly, Boop. Glad you're also in the, in the stream. And yeah, this game is actually very cute. I am thoroughly enjoying it. The Even though I just died. <laughs> uh, it is quite cute, but it is also, in this case, quite brutal. <laughs> oh no, where am I now? Oh, I'm back here. Oh man, okay, so this is uh, 
quite a long glide and everything again. Okay. Let's see whether we can make it over to that side. Again, as we glide, we are supposed to be using our left and right front legs to actually be changing direction. I think we technically did that. And then we're just going to we're just going to be learning from our from our route here and make our way along. And this time around, we're going to try and not be knocked off into the swamp by that uh, low-hanging branch that knocked us down the first time around. All right, let's see here. Let's see if we can jump onto this little guy. There we go. Catching a lift. Catch a ride. Making our way through the swamp on a taxi. I suspect this is the branch that got us. No. No. Yeah, it is. Okay. Apparently it was. Alright. Now, let's see. Any other trees with markings on it? Because we need to head in that direction, actually. So why did I go that way around? That's the question. Ah. Because we need to get to our mother and sister, which are somewhere to that side. I don't know why I've been... Going the other way. Oh, well, let's, let's try and jump. Okay, I'm going to land in the swamp. That's why I didn't come this way around. Yeah. Oh, we made it to this tree. Okay. Now, I think we need to get onto the big rocks and then from there glide over. I think that's what we need to do. But I might have just taken the wrong turn there, just going according to the markers. <laughs> uh, let's see. Am I menacing? Hello. Welcome to the chat. You're not supposed to go through the waterfall yet. That is why you got brought back oh, all the way there. Okay. So I guess I will have to later on go and use the markings on the tree to actually go that way. I suspect I need to go to the... I honestly don't know. I, I, I thought I was supposed to go to the... To the wreck. Or there where the bearded vulture is with my mother and sister. Whoa, I wish I could just easily climb onto the right branch. Okay, there we go. Made it onto the right branch, accidentally. Uh, okay. okay. Kind of made it to where I wanted to go. Now, let's see. I don't think I am where I'm supposed to be, but I'm here nonetheless. Alright, so. I'm supposed to go that way? Okay. I guess so. Oh well, here we go again. Oof, just oof, solidly dropping into the water. <laughs> uh, tonight on an ecologist plays, an ecologist tries to figure out the way to go. I'm usually very good at navigating, but in games I do suck. Sometimes. Sometimes I'm good at navigating in games as well, but sheesh, other times like this I really just, sh just suck. Okay, we need to get up there somewhere. For a moment, I thought I saw the aurora. That is, that looks like the aurora up there. The uh, northern lights, or in this case, the southern lights. Aurora Australis. Okay, interesting. Okay, we're going to go in that direction once more. Go, made it. And then over to this, this side. There we go. And on here again. Once more, off we go. Up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. And we're climbing. Right. Now. That way. And I think... I don't think I can make it this... Well, maybe I can actually climb up here. Can I? No. I don't think so. No. Not really. Okay. I was thinking maybe there's like a shortcut to get there, but apparently not. Let's go back this way, shall we? Let's do this again. Okay. And up the last one. And then onto the log. Oh no! 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 <laughs> oh man, okay. Onto the rock. Come on. <sighs> once more, everyone, once more. Okay, here we go again. 
Okay. Made it onto the log once more. Now. At this rate, my little Joey is going to starve to death by the, before we can actually get where we need to go. Okay, but here we go. <sighs> okay, I guess back this way, yes. And then... I guess over to this, th this place. And this place once more. And now I'm just going to... Get closer and then jump onto the log. There we go. Missed that click earlier. Okay. And now we are up here. So the question now is where to? Because there are a whole bunch of red stuff there which we can't get to. Hmm. Okay. I guess we're waiting just for our instinct bar to actually refill. I wonder whether that's the red. Maybe that's the red that we need to refill with food. Actually. Come to think of it. Should probably have checked that, but I think it is this. Like, it tells us we're supposed to head in that direction. I don't see any other glowing mushrooms. Like, there's mushrooms over there. There by the bearded vulture. That's surveying the landscape. And I don't know how to get there. But it's telling us what? Somewhere down that way. Okay, an ecologist tries to figure out what to do. Are there any trees that are tall enough for us to land? Probably if we like get onto one of these big oak trees, right up at the top and then glide over, that could work. But we first need to get there, of course. I'm going to try and glide from up here. Let's see. Can we make it? We can. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, now, right to the top. That's where we're heading. Right to the top. And then we are hoping that this is actually the way. Well, actually, maybe not right to the top. Maybe onto this branch. Eating all the raisin that we can find on the way. And maybe if we actually get to the tip here, we can jump over. Yeah, this, this could be it. Maybe. Maybe. No. I was just about to say, if I don't mess up the the jump... <sighs> really? Okay. I'm gonna try this once more. <laughs> oh, man. I can just laugh at my own misfortune. I knew as I was standing on the edge of that branch, I knew I was going to jump wrong because the Joey was facing all kinds of different directions than it's supposed to be facing. I knew I was going to face the wrong way, but I jumped in any, jumped anyway. Okay. Here we go, once more onto the breach, dear friends, once more. And once more up here, once more to the tip of the rocks here, and onto the log there. And then, you know what, I'm just going to jump from up here. Jump down, da -da 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 -da. I'm Batman. Well, I'm Sugar Glider Man. And then... Let me just check. We need to go there. We need to go higher up. We need to go higher up. Okay. Come on. Please. This time around, controls work with me. Please just work with me. Okay. Maybe we're supposed to be on, like, this branch. 
Like you can see there, my Joey is facing all kinds of different directions than he's supposed to. It's not on top of the branch. It is on the side. It is on the underside of it. So if I jump now, it's just going to go in, to weird, in weird places, like it did earlier. But I'm pretty sure we need to get from here. Oh. We need to get onto the helicopter. Or whatever this thing is that we see under there. Yes. Please. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. That took us way too long. Now I must just not drop down into the abyss below. I'm not even sure if we need to be up here, but we are now. Um. Oh no! No! <laughs> okay. Honestly, I don't even know. I'm just going to... Die. I'm just going to drown and then start at the top. This is going to be the easiest. Sorry everyone, tonight you're watching a little sugar glider die. He is trying to swim. Uh, not very good at it. Of course, a lot of animals are very good at the swimming bit. I'm not actually sure how good the sugar gliders are with their little potassium, with a little membrane between their front and hind limbs. Most likely would not be very good at the swimming bit. <sighs> but here we are. Once more. I really wish they just showed me a little bit better where I needed to go. Maybe I need to go up there. Maybe that is the way. There is like a... Uh, yeah, there's a log here. This is probably the way, isn't it? Like, I've been spending the past half an hour going the wrong way. Oh, okay. That's one way to go about doing things. Like a little catapult. Okay. Now. I suspect glide over. And then a bit more jumpy jumpies. Okay. Made that jump. Okay, I'm under the rock, that's why I can't jump up. Up we go. Oh. There we go. Okay. We are in a new area, finally. Finally in a place we weren't earlier. I haven't been yet, I think. I think. Looking awfully familiar, but I don't think we've been here. Oh yeah, no we haven't been here because there's another scorpion. Hmm. Okay, it's another showdown! And counter-attack! Jump! Come on! And lunge! With a lot of these animals, like meerkats also, the idea is that you dodge the attack and then strike. As these little guys are doing now. Ah, I think we've killed him! Come on, let me feast. This looks very much like a burrowing scorpion. A uh, pistophthalmus, but I don't know whether they actually occur in Australia. Of course, a lot of the animals here are not native to Australia. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Looks almost also like an emperor scorpion, which is one of the largest ones we have on Earth. Okay, just trying to figure out where to go now. Probably, yeah, probably that way. The tenacious Joey continues his quest and is mm -hmm. determined to rescue his family. On to the next glide. Okay, here we go again. I think this is another, yeah, another log. A sliding log offers the glider an unexpected boost. Okay. I think I was supposed to go onto the uh, helicopter there. I suspect so. I don't want to climb up everything again. Where's the, where, where are the nearest thorn bushes? On this way, this side. Ah, oh. You know what? There's something else I can use to die this time around. Come. 
Let's get onto the log. The fact that the... I missed the helicopter there. I'm not going to jump all over again. What I'm going to do is wait for the little deer to come past. Once it decides to. If it decides to. And then we're going to say hello to our little reptilian friends that are living in the swamp. Oh man, these guys are taking too long. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to swim for it, I guess. Paddle, 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 paddle. Now, where's our new friend? Mr. Crocodilus, we are looking for you. So yeah, I'm not even going to try to escape this one. I am just going to say hello and... Uh, I hear you. Where are you? There we go. Hello, Mr. Crocky. Most likely saltwater crocodile there. The largest living crocodilian. And uh, it's a tight race between Nile Crocodile and Saltwater Crocodile for the largest. But most likely the Nile Crocodile, yes, is smaller than the Saltwater Crocodile. And then followed by the Black Cayman, which we saw in Green Hell when we were playing that back in the day. They are most likely the third largest a living crocodilian. Offers the glider an unexpected boost. Are we really supposed to go? There we go. Yes. To have stopped for a breather. Uh -huh. Glider's mother and sister still in its clutches, but the pair of marsupials appear alive and well. There's hope. <laughs> the glider must press on. He may yet be able to save them. Oh, okay. Am I menacing saying that in an earlier version of this game there used to be either a Scarlet King Snake or a Coral Snake? Can't remember which one instead of that scorpion. Interesting. Yeah, so we fought one of the King Snakes earlier, so could have been a Coral Snake that was actually at that place. A little bit, a little bit more dangerous, perhaps. And uh, just checking to see if there's anything over here. Don't think so. I know there is something on the other side. But then again, I'm not sure whether I really, really, really want to try and jump. Okay, I could jump. Okay, that's fine. Let's see. We've got something here. Okay, lady. We're just going to ignore the crazy little hippie lady over there. So we're just going to carry on on our little way. Obviously, the little sugar glider would be frightened by something like that, popping up randomly. And I suspect now we've got to go where we had gone earlier. So we're just going to say hello to our dear friends over the here. Area has <laughs> been flooded. The mud and water create a treacherous obstacle, threatening to trap and sink any small animals that venture in. The glider will have to find an innovative way to cross this expanse. More spooders. Okay. Ah, come on. I just want to jump onto the log. Thank you. Right. Now we can finally go where we used to. We actually went earlier. Okay. Any moment now. So both of these are bucks. They are males. A male deer. And the idea is that they or they would, of course, grow these horns. Uh, it looks like these are... Yeah, they've already... Um, they're not living anymore. So initially, as the antlers start growing... I called them horns a moment ago, I think. It's supposed to be antlers. So these antlers, when they are actually young, they would be vascularized, meaning that they actually have got skin over it, and it's living, it's got blood on it, all, blood pumping through it, all kinds of things. We're just going to jump onto the tree here, away from our crocodile friends. But now, at this point in time, the skin, uh, or uh, the, the antlers have died. There's no longer blood flowing in there, it's dead. It's just a, an ornament on the head there. And of course, an ornament used to attract females, or try to fight rivals, and then also attract mates. Which is, of course, the main reason why a lot of animals have a lot of weird adornments. Trying, trying to attract the opposite sex. Okay, 
Right, here we go, finally. Yeah, so I unfortunately I've spent 30 minutes trying to uh, on the wrong way. <laughs> but here we are once more, okay. So we are just going to try and make it over to that tree. And hopefully not get eaten along the way. And this time around we are following the little white trail. Now there is a salty right underneath us. He's feeling quite salty about the fact that he hasn't been able to eat us. Oh no, really? Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna die. Most at home here, balancing on branches like a tight rope walker, avoiding what threats lurk on the ground. Yeah, the problem is I landed right next to a saltwater crocodile there. That's not nice. The uh, gliding there was not very good at all. Yeah. Okay, let's let's eat this one, shall we? <sighs> okay, let's let's try this again. Down once more, onto this branch we go. And then into this tree. Come on. No. Okay. I'm probably just going to die now again. Or actually, oh, oh never mind. Made it. Made it. I would just need to get around here, but we made it to here. <laughs> Not where we're supposed to be, but we got here. Now we need to get onto one of those other trees. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> oh man just when i thought okay we're safe we were not safe there is something else there i think is i keep on oh wait i'm in the tree that i couldn't get to earlier but i am here now now i think there are bobcats over there there we go there is one right there we're just going to wait for it to go away a little bit and then we are going to uh Ooh, okay we made it we made it into the tree into the tree okay okay right didn't go as planned but it went okay let's head in onto this branch and then see where we need to go probably onto that tree yeah now where's our bobcat friend because we inevitably are going to miss this jump and we do not want it under us or close to that tree when we make the jump or try to make the jump okay walking over there shortish tail i'm pretty sure that is bobcat rather than lynx both of them will have very similar appearance a secret pathway to safety for our dauntless joey okay there we go making it across and as i've mentioned earlier yes it's much more energy saving a much more energy saving method to travel from point a to point b by gliding between trees and it's also a much safer way to travel than trying to run on the ground here with things like in this case bobcats walking around now, i don't think bobcats are even invasive in australia where this game most likely is set so i would suspect that this bobcat over here would most likely have been like in a zoo situation or someone's pet that then got set free or escaped during the apocalypse okay i think we've got to go on to this branch over here oh it's finicky but i'm making it there we go and oh where to now that's the question one of those two trees most likely oh can we make it all the way i think we possibly could if we get onto the right branch we can there we go i think we're on the right branch there's a bobcat there we are going to try and not be seen by it not be eaten by it okay all right we've made it onto this tree i think we are almost in the clear he says as he is about to die most likely come on Oh, finicky controls. There we go. Okay. Now we just need to get there without being eaten. Here's the bobcat coming past. 
The mists of a waterfall provide a <sighs> temporary respite. Yes. Okay. Oh man, can't believe we made it to there. Is getting closer. The trees won't be able to protect the glider from high winds, torrential downpours, or lightning strikes. The Joey must act fast to avoid being caught in the tempest. Okay, we most likely will have to glide over to this point over here. Made it. And then onto the swinging logs. Well, this is going to go well. <laughs> uh, I don't have a lot of faith in myself here with jumping stuff. Okay, made it here. That's good. Now. Okay, we could make it up here. That's nice. Accidentally grabbed onto it. I'll take it. Let's eat. Fill up a little bit. Okay. And now... Where to? Down? No, surely not down. Up. Okay, that way. Okay. Oh, it's another one of these. Okay, I was like, how on earth am I going to get up? But that way, apparently. And up these little roots. Great stuff. Okay, suddenly Boop says, I've heard that groups of younger bucks will come together in small gangs. Interesting. Yeah, we don't have deer naturally in South Africa. So I've got very little, actually, well, little, very little ecology, ecological experience about deers. But in South Africa, yeesh. Antelope like the springbuck, yo, those things come together in potentially massive, massive herds. I'm not sure. The tunnel is blocked. Okay. The way is blocked. What have you got there? Oh, there's a spider. There's a spider. That looked like a huntsman spider. But there is a beetle here. Come on, give me the stag beetle. Or not. The vulture soars over the island like a mm. prehistoric monster keeping far ahead of the valiant glider. This structure, known before the evacuation as Geo's safe dome, was once home to hundreds of scientists. Okay. Was once home, so obviously the, uh, the scientists haven't made it. <laughs> okay, and we need to head towards it, it seems. And most likely what we'll have to... Oh, uh, no! Why did I do that? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. This is, this is, of course, I roll off the cliff. I'm just going to drown again. And so we wait. I'm not going to climb up all the way. No, I'm just going to wait. And wait for sweet release of death for this little Joey. Shame. Poor little thing. There's no way I would be able to s swim, I think, to where we need to go before we die. We're going to try. I should have started this a little bit earlier, but yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it. With the Q and the E buttons, the, the roll buttons being so close to forward, like W, it's bound to happen that I'm going to roll off cliff faces at some point or another, and voila, there it happened. Okay. So, I think... We're going to just try and lie down into this tree. I don't know whether there's anything dangerous around here. Because we don't know, we are just landing and then checking our surroundings. Okay, so there are mantises down there. That appears to be the only things to worry about. And that we can take care of. Nonetheless, we are going to try and glide and then fall to the ground, apparently. What a find. An oasis teeming with life. The sugar glider must take every advantage of this plentitude. Interesting, the narrator says plentitude, but the subtitle says Our plenitude. Our is relentless. He won't give up, fighting and floating for as long as it takes to be reunited with his beloved family. Okay, and we need to get over this fence, I think. If I can see where I'm going, that'll be very, very useful. Okay, I suspect this is the way to go. Telling me there. Surely not there. Surely we should be on this side? Uh, maybe. 
Let's see, maybe it is this way. This was erected decades ago by the Global Emergency Organization, or GEO for short. Here, human scientists mounted a last-ditch effort to stop the devastating changes to the Earth that threatened all human life. Sadly, those efforts ended hmm. in failure. And yet hope remains. The mysterious survival of species like the sugar glider suggests there might be a way for us to survive here, too. Hmm. Okay. Are we going to have to uh, ah survive the attack by all the spooders? No. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. There's a rat. That's obviously also not nice. A little baby sugar glider, a little sugar glider Joey. That's obviously danger. Now we must, I must just remember to follow the purple fungi. The little purple mushrooms will guide the way as we. Head further up as we are attacked again by spiders. No, stop it. Listen here. Very few spiders would actually attack in groups like that. Very few spiders are what one would call social. Most spiders are solitary dwellers. There are some that will make commun communal nests, but very few spiders would actually be that social where there are like a bunch of them together like that. Okay, I suspect I've got to glide over to that side. So that's what I'll do. Nope, that's not what I'll do. I'll die by impaling myself myself on the <laughs> thorns there. <sighs> okay, where am I? I am here. Okay, off we Nature go once more. Reclaimed Geo's once imposing dome. For the glider. Memphis. No. Not now. A strange series of branches to navigate as he continues his quest to rescue his family. Little does he realize the success of his quest means as much to us. As it does to him. As I fall off again. Memphis is begging for more and more and more food on my right hand side. He was about to bump my hand once more. He's got this habit and he's gotten into this habit quite a bit recently. The glider is in trouble. This clutter of spiders threatens to overwhelm him. I'm not really in too much danger from them. I'm in more danger from myself. Anyway, Memphis has his habit nowadays of, at the most inopportune moments, even though he's, he's got food in his bowl, he comes and he just violently bumps my hand with his head. And he would do it in the most inopportune moments, like when you've got to try and focus on a specific glide in this case. He would come and bump my hand and do all kinds of things. It's cute, but yo, it can be, it can be quite bad. Just going to this time this time not impale ourselves on the thorns. Come on, any spiders wanna come for us up here? No? Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh uh, no. Okay. Here we go again. It is also quite dark on the screen, so you guys can't see me. Properly either, I guess. Not sure whether there is a way to perhaps just turn it up. Let's see. Settings. Da, 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 video. Gamma. Let's try to just... Let's make it brighter. So you can see a little bit better. I can see a little bit better. Everyone can see a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Gamma is now up. Oh, motion blur is quite bad. Where are we supposed to even go now? that way really oh yes there we are we're supposed to go that there great should be some more spiders yeah there we go those spooders and goodbye spiders yeah <laughs> those spiders do seem unfortunately large yes very very large not sure what spiders they are supposed to be but i don't think it is anyone that exists or would be this size let's see i think i should be able to just jump onto this thing hopefully come on let me jump onto this middle section and then just run up it ah oh, yes okay let's see let's see animals from this earth don't belong to you indeed they the don't sugar glider's relationship to the island's fungi is a continuing marvel Though we have yet to understand the intricacies of this process or to fully explore its implications. 
Okay, we're just going to keep on gliding. The have overrun the area. The glider must act fast if he's to find a way out of this mess. Mm-hmm. Come on. Oh, it would be interesting to know if I can just get my controls right here. There we go. It would be interesting to know whether the spiders have gotten to the point where they've eaten almost everything else, but doesn't seem to be the case. Doesn't seem to be the case because there are cockroaches and all kinds of insects still alive for them to eat. So I wouldn't say that there is unnecessarily or necessarily too many uh, spiders. There are a lot, like definitely. The sugar glider. Some of the insects and arachnids on Saviour Island have shown signs of fungi symbiosis, a deeply intuitive and perhaps mutually dependent connection with the area's fungal life. Hmm. This phenomenon points to an exciting theory that, if true, could lead to a human renaissance on planet Earth. Let's break this fence and break through. Is there anything to our left? No, nothing to our left, so we can just go through here. Finally, making some headway again. Hmm. Can we go through here? I don't think we can really, or, su or supposed to go through here. I think we've got to go around here. Lots and lots of creepy crawlies all over the place. Okay, I'm hoping we are supposed to jump down here. I think we are. Geo archive data, hmm. January 16th, 2089, hour 10 a.m. Alert code red. Scientists observed increased aggression in remaining animal species, potentially as a consequence of various toxins released in the destruction of our infrastructure. Geo asks survivors to stay vigilant as many sectors are no longer safe for humans. End transmission. Okay. A whole bunch of toxins, it seems, and then aggressive or aggressive behavior from the animals, all kinds of stuff happening. And uh, hello there, Agiliki. Glad you could also make it to the stream. Uh, let's see here. We are just going to break through this mesh over here by punching everywhere except on the mesh. Our little sugar glider is also very, very aggressive. There we go. Right, just carrying on. <laughs> I think we're supposed to head this way. Okay, maybe another boss fight coming up. Oh. This is a Goliath birdie. Oh. Its hefty mass and huh. body weight make it the largest spider in the world. An opportunistic feeder would happily chomp down on our joey if given the chance. This glider must do everything in its power to avoid it. Okay, so Goliath bird eaters, the biggest spiders in the world, about the size of a dinner plate. Ah! There it is. Okay, we're just going to hide from it by filling over here, and peeking around the corner there. I think managed to give me a bit of a fright there. We're just going to try and hide in here. And see where it is. There it is. Okay, okay. Not sure where we need to go from here. Probably onto that, into that little section there. But here it comes again. Please don't see me in here. Please don't see me in here. There's nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Just keep moving. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm just going to go in here now. Okay. Okay. Where are you? Right down there. Okay. Just going to wait for him to move past, and then we're going to go there. Ooh. Okay. Off we go. But oh, there he is again. There he is again. Oh, there's another one. Is him or is it another one? Looks like the same one. Okay. Run, forest! Ah, here we go. We need to go this way. Where is it? It's right up there. Okay. Oh, ho, 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 ho. 
Okay, we're going to need to go that way, but we don't know where he is. There he is. Okay, maybe we can make it. We can make it if we try. I don't think I should have come out now, but I came out now. Let's see. Ooh, I hear it. Oh, there it is again. Okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> Rachnus Video Gamers. Yes, uh, they're definitely the, the scientific name of uh, of the spiders we have here. Rachnus Video Gamers. <laughs> uh, but Agiliki, what do you have missed us for? We are heading after a bearded vulture, uh, or also known as a Ossefrager, uh, I think it is also called, or a Lammergeier. And it's a big vulture that has caught our mother and sister. Uh, last we checked, they were still alive. And basically, we are just trying to, to get to them. And try and figure out where they are. And then, at the same time, try to hide from the big spider that we've got here. Okay, it is right up there. Hmm. Now, how to go past it without it spotting us? Maybe we can actually come past it here. Yes. Okay, but that's the, the crux of the matter. Basically, it's also an, a, a post-apocalyptic setting, so humankind is pretty doomed, I think. And a few species have been able to survive, like our little sugar glider over here. Definitely one of the most, or the most adorable little uh, marsupials around. The glider has done well. Yes. Managing to avoid the tarantula's terrible attention. Thank you, narrator. Now, I guess we are heading up. Yes, looks like it. Just follow the mushrooms. Uh, we are also starving. So we're going to have to grab something to the eat there. The summit of Geo's towering dome provides an opportunity. A panoramic view of the island. There's a chance that from height, he'll be able to spot his missing family members. Hmm, okay. We're going up. And I was hoping to eat that cockroach, and then it just disappeared. There's some more here. Come on. Little green cockroach, come on. There we go, finally. Now, let me munch on you. Nice bunch of protein. Oh, wow, that really fills up that little sugar glider. So the nectar that it would be feeding on, and the, the uh, raisin, that's great for energy initially but you know in short bursts but for real sustenance it would need to get protein and it needs to get insects and stuff like that that's far more nourishing in the long run than just nectar or or sugary substances like in real life like sweets are nice to eat but you can't just survive off sweets alone you need to eat something more substantial also okay so we're just trying to find our way up there here he must catch up with the vulture. Wait, Time where are they? Is running out. Oh, there they are. Hello there. So there's the bearded vulture, Agiliki. Massive bird, and off he goes again with our parents. Ah, with our mother and sister, at least. Okay, I suspect, yeah, we're going to glide through that little hole over there. Extend our patagia, patagia, actually, so plural, the two skin flaps, and off we go. Ah, oh, it's so much fun. Oh, and there is a storm brewing, everyone. There is a storm brewing. I'm hearing foxes, I think. Oh, no, wolves. Okay. Oh, wow, okay. There comes a nice little bushfire. What has happened? A bolt of lightning has struck one of the island's trees and started mm. a fire. This blaze is sure to move quickly with the strong winds. Our glider must be quicker still. Oh, no. And now there are wolves there. <coughs> wolves. These perennial hunters are always on the lookout for fresh meat. Mm. If the sugar glider won't offer much of a meal on an island where game is scarce, the wolves are unlikely to turn down even the lightest of snacks. Okay. Oh, goodness me. Okay. We're going to try and stay in the trees, because that's what the sugar glider would do. It would stay in the trees as much as possible. Okay, but we are stuck. 
on the loop of being unable to actually there we go get onto the right branch uh that tree over there that's where i'm heading now oh no oh no oh okay i'm in the undergrowth that might be good <laughs> Oh, well, okay. It seems we do have some lichen here as well. Some old man's beard hanging down. These little threads. Uh, Asnia. They, that's a genus of them. They're only found in areas where the air quality is actually quite good. They're very sensitive to sulfur in particular. Uh, so they in the atmosphere. So when there's a lot of air pollution, the Asnia tend to disappear. The, uh, the old man's beard tend to disappear. Okay, come on. Just let me glide now. Properly, please. The wolves have picked up go. the glider scent and are congregating beneath the hmm. trees. Lost Why? footing or a single miscalculated glide could land our Joey inside a pair of snapping jaws. And wolves aren't the only problem. The fire is progressing quickly. Oh no. Alright, I guess up we go as much as we can. We just grab this snack here as well. No matter how pressing, there's always time for a snack. Okay, let's see. I think we need to head to that tree that's over there. Fortunately, we're on the wrong side of the branch. Come on, I want to get to the top side, please. Top side. No. Our little Joey is very confused in life. Come on. Not the best controls. There we go. Okay, 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 okay. We're on the top of the branch. Yay. No. No. Not what I want. Okay, fine. I'm just going to... Jump, there we go. Leap of faith, everyone. Into the tree, into the tree. There we go. Okay. I suspect we're heading to that tree next. Yeah, most likely. Get another snack here. Oh, come on. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll head onto this branch. And of course, we're going to be on the wrong side again. Come on. This is this is the point in time where I wish there were a way to just be in single person. No, like I can, yeah, first first person, not single person, first person view, just so that I can actually maneuver along the branches better than the game lets me maneuver. Because I am almost certainly going to die now because I'm upside down, and I want to get As to the that tree. The glider clings to the tree for dear life. As the fire leaps from tree to tree, our glider is running out of options. Okay. Let's see. I think we need to head to that... Uh, yeah, we need to head to those trees there. So we're going to go to this tree next. Come on. Oh, man. My, my, yeah. My game kind of froze there at that point in time. Oh, we made it. Okay. I had a bit of a short lag there, which was just enough to throw me off course, of course. <laughs> okay. And now I think we head to that tree over there. No, of course we're not heading to that tree at the moment. We are doing going everywhere else. Ha ha ha, sorry wolves. Bark all you want, we are up in the tree. Good luck getting to us. Thankfully canids don't climb. Thankfully, wolves can't climb. Um, I think we need to head to that tree, yes. Oh, fiddly, 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 fiddly controls. Okay. Now, I think this is going to be, hopefully, be our second last jump here. And... Ah, oh, we made it to this one. Yes. Nice oak tree. English oak. Quercus rubo, robur. Uh, you can see from the leaves here. It's one of the few oaks I do know. That and the cork oak are the two oaks I know relatively well. The fire has driven a herd of deer out into the open. Oh. An opportunity for the glider to hmm. hitch a ride. <clears throat> okay. So there we go. Hitching a lift, I guess.
Ixi. Quite cool. Well, quick time event. Just jump, jump, jump. As the whole forest starts to burn. Okay. Magic little sugar glider there. Doing all kinds of stunts while flying. <laughs> oh no, why did I jump? I don't know why I jumped. Try again, not fast enough. <laughs> I got distracted for a moment and I thought I saw the jump sign and then I jumped. Oh man, really? So we've got to do it all the way from up here. Okay. This time I will only press jump when it actually tells me to jump. The fire has driven a herd of deer out into oh, the open. Oh man. An opportunity for the glider to hitch a ride. But yes, indeed, Agiliki, those, uh, the vulture there is quite scary. They're quite big in, in real life as well. I mean, I've seen them twice in my life, and they are surprisingly big. I really love them, though. The uh, old name we had for them, at least in Afrikaans, is Lammergeier. I think it comes from the Dutch word, uh, Lammer, and it, I think it's also, I think in, uh, in German, it is also Lammergeier. And a geyer, I believe, refers to a vulture. So it's the, the lamb vulture, which most likely comes from a b mistaken belief that they will actually catch lambs. But there have been some cases of them catching smaller mammals, either things like hyraxes or hares or uh, smaller things, marmots and things like that. But they rarely, rarely, rarely will go for, for big prey. They mostly specialize actually in eating bone and bone marrow far more nutritious than a little mammal that they could potentially eat. But they really wouldn't easily go for these little guys. Oh, wow, there goes another deer. The little crocodile caught that one deer there. Yeah, that's not nice. It's very similar to the ooh, crocodiles in the Serengeti eating the, the zebras and wildebeest. Oh, as another one dies. Eating the wildebeest and the zebras and all kinds of this young glider animals. Has certainly improved his acrobatic skills since mm -hmm. he left his nest. Yes. This one Ooh, student there is. his mother's side is becoming a master. Oh, look at that bearded vulture, and off he goes with a little wedge tail in the back there. Quite characteristic of the of the Lammergeier. Of the bearded vulture there. I suspect we've got to head in that direction. Uh, hmm. Oh, I see wind turbines as well in the distance. Interesting. Now, yeah, we've got to go in that direction. Okay. Is there any specific way to do this? I don't know. I'm just going to glide and hope. Hope for the best. Possibly along the trees. That's... Quite probably what we need to do. Oh, why did I fall in the water here? Come on, that's not what I was aiming for. Okay, maybe swim to this tree. That's what I've got to do. Oh, 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 oh. Not very good with the swimming, but... There we go. Okay, we're in the trees again. Trees equal safety. Okay. I think we're on the right track. We're following the mushrooms as we've learned to. And we should be alright with this. Vultures really are really, really awesome. And I, I absolutely love vultures. Unfortunately, like for, an in, like for example in India, I think the population has declined in some areas by 99.9%. .9 where a few years ago, or a few decades, that's within a few decades, eh? Where 30 years ago there may have been 100,000, now there are like 10 to 100 of them left. It is really, really sad. And that's mainly due to the use of certain uh, medicine for cattle that are suffering from pain. Uh, and I just fell into the water once more. Uh, diclofenac, I believe, is the is the compound that is that has resulted in their decline. It basically just shuts down their organs completely. And um, yeah, I guess at some point we will be talking about that. 
Now I just have to fight, figure out which way to go, probably to that tree. Come on, climb, climb, climb. Okay. Oh, still made it. Right, and then onto that tree, most likely. Come on. Haha, -ha, yes. I've got this habit of oversteering a bit, and then all kinds of havoc happens. Okay, I suspect onto this branch. Come on. And then, probably on to there. Yeah, right over here. Right to you. Let's just fill up everything. Emergency evacuation route straight into the swamp. <laughs> I don't think so. I do not think so. I suspect, yeah, onto the lily pads. Since we are quite heavy, we can't stay on here forever. We do need to move so that we don't sink into the water. It feels like there should be a crocodile or two waiting for... Oh, wait, oh, never mind. There we go, into the water. Don't want that happening. Haha! <laughs> What have, what have we here? I don't... A black mamba. Oh, oh, oh. The most dangerous snakes oh my world. word, of course. This snake is fast, highly venomous, and loves to dine on small mammals like the glider. Also birds. Jerry will need all his skills to survive this menace. Oh, man. Okay. Dendroaspis polylepis, the black mamba. And now, the coloration in the game here is showing it as black. It's actually a very dull gray color. The black actually comes from the, or the black in its name comes from the inside of its mouth. Uh, first of all, its head is coffin shaped, so that already tells you where you'll end up if you bitten by these guys. But when they open their mouth in their three display, it's pitch black inside. And that's where the name Black Mamba comes from. Not from its actual color, but rather from the color of the inside of the, uh, of the mouth. One bite will be more than enough to kill this joey, so we really should try to avoid it. Okay, and we're going to keep on dodging it until it is stunned. And then... Oh no! Oh no! Are we bitten? I think we... Okay, I think we're alright. Okay, apparently we are mauling it to death. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. Guess that's one way to go about doing it. Aha, no, not today, Snakey. Oof, that was close. Oh, no, okay. I went a little bit over eager there. Somehow. I survived. Okay, may have been a bit of a dry bite there. Technically, that should have been a fatal bite. Maybe not immediately, but it should have been a uh, a fatal bite. Okay, come on. Okay, yeah. By the time I actually managed to do the attack, it just decided nope. There we go. Uh, Diclofenac. Yes, anti-anti-inflammatory drug. Thanks, uh, suddenly boop. Uh, it's an anti-inflammatory drug using cattle that causes acute kidney failure in avians and is responsible for worldwide uh, die-offs of species in India. So, before we take on the black mamba, it might be good to actually talk about that because, yeah, the vultures, what happened, of course, in India where uh, cattle are considered sacred in some of, the, some of the cultures and religions there, if a cow dies, you don't eat it. Instead, you, they would be put out as, uh, for the vultures to actually eat. And then what's happened is, of course, if a cow gets kind of injured, they are treated. And we as humans, we use, we use some kind of pain medication that contains uh, diclofenac. And I keep on forgetting its name. It's a common one that is, that is used. But anyway, so what's happened is that the, the cattle are treated with diclofenac. And then when they eat the, the, uh, the dead cattle, they get that compound into their bodies and it accumulates in their tissues and then they, they as you say, they, their kidneys give in. They, they suffer acute kidney failure. And as a result, the populations have died off tremendously. And that has had some unforeseen circumstances. As a result of that, 
feral dogs have increased in certain areas uh, because now the cattle are still being put out but vultures aren't eating it instead dogs are eating it and as a result the feral dog population has increased tremendously in many areas and with that the increase in rabies and uh, uh, dog associated rabies of course so there's that but for some uh, cultures and religions like in zoroastrianism in some areas at least what happens is if a person dies they are put uh, on special i think little raised areas to be eaten by vultures they're basically sky burials and now the vultures are gone so you can't just put a dead family member out to for one of these sky burials because there are no vultures and your relative is just going to lie baking in the sun there so it's a problem because this the faith dictates that okay when you die sky burial because that's the way it's always been done and now they can't do that because the vultures are not there anymore and it's having a lot of un uh, unforeseen circumstances and uh, Agaliki yes you are correct the green mamba is actually green uh, we encountered the green mamba and the black mamba in ancestors the humankind odyssey previously that we played and there we go let's just mash the button to attack it again and in that game actually they had the color of the black mamba correct it was more gray rather than black as it is shown here and we're just going to keep on mashing buttons here to try and kill this mamba a stunning triumph oh well the it's dead outmaneuvered the snake with a grace beyond his years yeah Ah, interesting. If we look closely at the coloration here, we can actually see colored bands all across the body. This is the model of the king snake or coral snake that was used for the black mamba here. And it's just given a darker color. The black mamba does not really have lighter and darker bands on here. So if you look at it closely, you can see this is actually the king snake model. The mamba would also, being in the Elapidae, the cobra family, it would have a slight hood, actually. So not quite as pronounced as the typical as the typical cobras, but it would have a slightly flattened section by the head, which indicates a hood. It can actually raise up to a third of its body length. You know, it can raise up. So if you are unfortunate enough to encounter one of these in the bush, you could be bitten on the chest quite easily by a big one. And there have been records of people bitten on their chest by black mambas as they reared up and then just struck at you know, right here. And this is quite a bad place to be bitten uh, by them. Neurotoxic, so they would of course be affecting your breathing or your, your, your ability to breathe and your nervous system gets, uh, gets affected by it. Typical elapidae response uh, with, a, with a neurotoxic venom. Okay, and as we were talking, technically the fire had been raging on, and we are still trying to find a way onto the branches here. There we go, thank you. As we are trying to make our way onto this tree, thank you, there we go. Just going to keep on moving. Scurrying along and eating raisin as we go. You feel bad for the black mamba? Well, it was it or us. And in this case, when faced with extinction, everything else is a good enough uh, of a va valid alternative. We will do anything within our power to stay alive. And it's a sad fact, but if you are being charged by the last remaining rhino on Earth, and your life depends on it, that rhino won't, won't survive another day because it's your life on the line and that's, that's human nature. No matter how big a conservationist you are, you are going to just, unfortunately, then have to shoot or shoot that rhino. Oh, okay, there we go. Off into the water once more. Okay, into the tree once more. I think we are supposed to be on this branch, yes. I've got no idea where we are supposed to go from here. I think that way. Yeah, actually, we shouldn't be on this. We should be on that branch there. And if you think about it, um, you know, from, a, from a certain point of view, if you are a conservationist and you are dedicating your life to conserving nature and you are being charged by the last remaining rhino on Earth, 
and you have to choose between its life and yours. Yeah, you can let it trample you to death, but you can also p perhaps not save that species, but perhaps 20 other species by being alive. And uh, one could then argue that, okay, it's for, the, it's for the good of the whole world that unfortunately this one individual has to die. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's not to be taken lightly though, because shish, rhinos are amazing creatures and they are facing a hell of a difficult time. But if we work together, they can come back from the brink of extinction. It has been done before. Uh, in the 1980s and 1990s, there was a hectic conservation effort for rhinos going on. And they managed to save the rhino from almost certain extinction. And now, unfortunately, they are facing extinction again. Um, let's see, where are we supposed to go? Oh, onto that little island over there. Okay, that's not difficult. Alrighty. I would save both our lives. It would be, uh, if one could, then that's a great option. But it is not always as clear cut. And unfortunately, I'm jumping straight in the water again. As I'm just trying to get... Oh, come on, really? There we go. Great stuff. I wonder, what have we got here? Shelter here. For a moment, I read secret here. I'm like, wow. Did the developers put a secret area for us here and they made it unsecret? <laughs> nope, this is shelter. Okay. Into the deep. Reach the lowest point. Apparently, I've got another achievement. I just ticked off two achievements by killing the black mamba there, the dendro aspis polylepis, and then reaching this point. Interesting. Okay. Into the tunnels we head. Okay. Let's see here. I'm just going to jump over to this side. That's fine. And then just run. Alrighty. Oh. Surely we won't be able to make that jump. Maybe we should head up here. That is probably... Yeah, that's the way to go. Befriend the rhino and ride it to safety. That's a great plan, yes. That really is a great plan. What is this? This looks like, like some kind of giraffe skull. If you look at it, just above the eyes, there appear to be short horns there. Um, doesn't look like... No, they're not antlers that have broken off. Those appear to be horns. This is most likely a... Hmm, most likely a giraffe or a carpy skull. I think from the position of the horns, I would hazard a copy rather than giraffe. Although I don't know why they would have an a copy skull over here. That is very, very strange. Hmm. Okay, but here we go. Okay, you can stop attacking now, little guy. We made it. Just jumping onto this, these pipes. The environment is very well done. I must say, in this game, really, really well done. And also, the the platforming when it works is great. You know, it's a three-dimensional puzzle of how to get from point A to point B. But the controls are a bit finicky. And if the controls were a bit better, I would say if this were a first-person first person view, that actually would have worked a little bit better. Because then I could really control where I needed to go rather than in this in many cases with especially the trees battling on maneuvering around the branches and stuff like that let's see just heading over here okay we haven't seen signs of life in a long time eh except you know for the okapi skull okay let's see this is the way Something tells me there's going to be like a big rat or something coming up here. Like a mutated Norwegian rat. There's no life. 
Like, I would expect amphibians here also. I mean, there's, there's, there are no frogs here. There's nothing, which makes me think that maybe the water is toxic. Yeah, it does look quite toxic sludgish. Now, of course, amphibians are quite vulnerable to toxic compounds in their water because they have got, first of all, their tadpole stage, in, which in most cases will be aquatic. But you also have got the frogs themselves living in water and on land here. And with their permeable skin, or they, they, are, they are quite vulnerable to toxins in the water which can enter their, their bodies through their skin. So maybe this water is really just a horrible, horrible toxic sludge. And that is why we don't actually hear or see any frogs in this area. Hmm. Okay. We are just making our way over here, up and down and up and down and over and under. Okay, we haven't been here because we have a new thing to attack. And now, I guess this way? Yeah, this way it is. Again, another one of these skulls. This way, this time the other way around. Hmm, unless it is a deer skull. That almost looks perhaps more like deer. Maybe that's where the, the antlers are supposed to attach. Yeah, Agaliki, maybe that's also the thing. Maybe there's nothing here because there's some major predator that is also in here. And maybe that's the reason why we haven't seen or heard anything else. Look, it's a mask from like back in the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember those days. Okay, let's see here. Just hopping along, making our way across. The question is, what predator do you think are in here? Or could be in here? I've got an idea of what I would expect here to be. As for whether it is in here, I don't know. Maybe the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are in here somewhere. Heroes in a half shell. Let's see. It almost feels like we're going in circles, but I think we are... We have to be going the right way, right? Because we're constantly hitting, opening up gaps in fences. It's just a long section of pipes that we are following, though. Oh, no! Oh, no! Why did I fall in the water? I was getting cocky. Okay, wait, there we go. Okay, we made it. We made it. I was getting cocky there. I started to run on the pipes and then, yeah, fall in the water. Or fell in the water. Oh, wow, beautiful blue there. And lightning strike. Wow. Storm's raging on still. The way out. Hmm. There soars the vulture. Once more, seemingly miraculously, the glider has been able to track down his flying foe. The vulture sweeps through the air, casting its dark shadow across the land. It appears to be headed towards a large hmm. tree in the distance. Perhaps the location of its nest. Thing is, it wouldn't have a nest in the tree. It would nest on the rock faces. Attracting a curious amount of attention. Hmm. There may be more to it than meets the eye. Okay. Alrighty, let's head over to the tree, shall we? Ooh, another solitary butterfly type thing here. Come on. There we go, okay. So with the butterfly, with this little extension at the back here that we can kind of see... Uh, right over there, where my head currently is. <laughs> Uh, that little bit there is a bit of an insurance policy. The idea is that that's going to draw the attention of a bird, a bird in particular, or some other predator. And that predator is going to focus on that and actually attack that as the head of the butterfly. And then when it bites that, it rips off and the butterfly has a second chance at life. And it's a bit of an insurance policy. Of course, it only works once. It doesn't regrow, unlike the tail of most lizards. This That little tail there won't regrow so it is a once off but sometimes once is all you need and sometimes you just need one more chance in order to actually reproduce okay so we have to head up there i guess okay so let's carry on here 
I'm going to hazard a guess and say we've got to go that way. Apparently we've got to get, head that way, but I don't think there is a road or a path that way. We're going to go this way. And just fall in the water immediately because that is how we roll. Yep, that is exactly how we roll. We fall in all the water. Okay, uh, that way. There are mushrooms here. Oh, look at that wildfire. Wildfires, although they look catastrophic, and to some extent, yes, they are catastrophic, but they are a necessary part of many forest ecosystems, or many ecosystems, biomes overall, where it's a way to regenerate the vegetation, where it kills off a whole bunch of dense vegetation and opens it up, allowing a whole bunch of other plants to actually establish. In South Africa, we've got our one shrubland vegetation type, the Feinbos, which is specifically adapted to fire. And without fire, you're going to have a lot of species actually disappearing from the ecosystem because they need fire in order to open up gaps and remove competitors, allowing uh, the young ones to actually establish and grow. It also prevents any one species from actually dominating the landscape and outcompeting everything else. It provides everyone with a nice fair chance at survival. Okay, yeah, let's jump over the log into the water. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, like a gecko's tail, yes, but then the tails grow back, yes. So in the case of many lizards and geckos, a lot of them will be able to shed their tail and then regrow it. Some of them can also only just shed it once and then it doesn't grow back. But in many of the lizards and many of the gecko species, tails will grow back uh, more than once. Okay, let's have a look here. We're just carrying on. Oh, okay, we're just landing in the water. It's difficult to know whether you're looking at water or bog. Are we still all right? We're still fine. We're just eating on the way. Another little butterfly for us to nibble on. Okay, let's see. I guess... Somewhere to that side. Okay, okay. That's where we'll head. Um, I suspect we've got to go along here. And then on to that branch. Yes. Okay, uh, and then the branch falls off. Okay, it falls down. Uh, no, no, not in there. Not in there. We're going to die if we end up in there. Hmm. Which way to go? Which way to go? Maybe just along the outskirts here. Maybe. I don't think this is the way. Because, yeah, no, we are now far away from everything. Okay. Back we go. Ow. The sugar glider has taken a risk <laughs> by venturing close to these deadly red thorns. Yeah. This risk did not pay off. No, he did not. Scratched. A toxin now flows through his body, slowing him down and draining his strength. It'll mm -hmm. take time for him to recover. Okay. Good to know. Wrong way. I suspect they've got to head into the trees. Either the trees or some way up there. And I'm not sure how. I'm going to I'm going to try the the tree route. Because our sugar glider is perfectly adapted for life in trees. So he's going to go for the trees. Just like splash around in the water for a bit. Ow. And then climb up. And see if we can find a way. Uh, let's see, the vent things you walk through underground in previous versions used to have weird sleeping mutated rat things that you got to avoid wake waking up. Okay, you had to avoid waking them up. Interesting. Okay. Uh, suddenly Boop also says gerbils do that too. I remember my animal care teacher telling me to be careful while handling them because they can de-glove very easily. Wow. For a small mammal, the sugar glider is very fearless. Uh, indeed, Akiliki. Uh, so we, of course, are 
trying to find a way to just carry on. We've got to get to up to that tree. That's the objective. That is the main objective. And now, perhaps that we are up in the canopy over here, we can make our way across the trees. Yay, we made it. Okay, great stuff. Okay, come on. I want to get onto the tree here. I don't actually have a lot of experience with gerbils, so interesting that they can also detail themselves. Um, sure. Okay, come on, come on. Let's maneuver up here, thank you. Um, hmm. Yeah, no, I think we're on the right trail, heading... We're on the right track here, heading via the trees. We're doing what the sugar glider would do, sticking to the trees. Eating resin as we make our way through the trees. Come on. Um, okay, I would like to go onto this branch. There we go. Come on. Onto the branch. There we go. Nice. Then onto the tree up ahead and then hopefully over to the ruins on that side. That's the idea. No. Oh, oh just do that. Because, yes. Come on, any moment now. There we go. Onto the tree. I don't think we can jump from over here, on, from this branch onto there. No. We may need to actually make our way to that rickety bridge-like structure that is over there. Or climb higher and try to jump over to the ruin immediately. That could be it. Maybe. Oh, come on. Really? Okay. This. No, 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 no. Wrong, wrong branch. Wrong branch. This way. This, this, this. There we go. Okay. We're on the right branch. We're upside down, but we're on the right branch. Okay. No. We are upside down on the wrong, on the right branch. La, 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 la. We are, we're either upside down on the right branch or we are right way around on the wrong branch oh there we go there we go yes okay this is what i wanted let's head over here shall we oh okay we are kind of right now okay let's just double check out there's no danger in the way let's make it up here wow okay follow the mushrooms follow the mushrooms that's what we've got to do Oh, stag beetles. Are you are you dangerous now, your food? Food. 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 Oh, they're fighting back. That's not nice. No. Dinner. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look here. We need to get to that side, I guess. Oh, we can actually make it to here. Great stuff. No, 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 no. Almost fell into the thorns. Question is, do we need to go there or did we or we were supposed to come from there? I think we were supposed to come from there. Because I think we are supposed to go this way. That's what I'm I, I've decided. I think we are supposed to head this way. Yeah. Yes indeed, we are supposed to go this way. Haha! <laughs> Hollow Grove. There's a fire nado. Sheesh. Okay, that's 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 terrifying. Just when you thought the fire couldn't get any worse, it got worse. Okay. Ah, oh, no, really. Okay, I'm just going to drown once more. I really wish. We didn't have that, you know, bumping into rocks, kill or you know, knocked you off your, off your glide so easily. Because here I am now, trying to just get up. There we go. I kind of got up. Okay. I, whoa, that was one interesting launch. Just punch that ant into that, into the abyss. Okay. Okay, well, we made it here, one way or another. I'll just jump on you. Shh. All 
Alrighty. I suppose we are flying that direction. Eating something along the way. And some more along the way. <laughs> yeah, so Nick is saying, seems every time I pop in, you're, drow you're drowning. Indeed. Oh, there goes a bear. That was, was that a bear? I looked down at my phone to, no, to check the comments. And uh, there goes another thing. That looks like a bear. That looks like a bear's running Ooh, style of running. Interesting. Okay. I hear a bear. I hear the roar sound. Oh, can't see any at the moment. Interesting. But yeah, there, there have been a number of drowning events. And yeah, like that. Like lagging at the most inopportune moment. And there goes another bear. Hello there, bear. Bear with me. Let's see here. I think we are supposed to head to the white branch there. And, uh, and then it is, of course, falling over once more. And we glide to safety. Okay. Ah, there's a little vehicle here. Nice. A little remnant of a bygone era. I suspect Ooh, we can probably make it to that tree over there. If we land, land here and then... Okay, or, or just swim. Or just swim. That that could work. Not what I was hoping for, but that's what we got. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now, wait. Oh, come on, really? Okay. I think let's head on to this branch then. And try to make our way over to where we are. Oh, come on. Where we're supposed to go. Okay. Um, there appear to be places down there that we need to go to. Okay. Missed it, but got there nonetheless. Here we go once more. Follow the mushies. And let's see. Huh. Now I don't see the mushrooms. Unless I was supposed to head in uh, that direction. That could be. I was supposed to head in this direction. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. How am I supposed to make it across to that side? That's the question. Probably glide from up there, eh? Probably. Well, that's one way to potentially solve that. Let's see. Up the tree, up the tree, up the tree we climb. Any moment, there we go. Okay. Kind of made it. That counts. And up we go, okay. And where to now? Ah, roots to climb up. There we go. Yay! Let's see. Agaliki says it's a good thing that the bears in the area are <laughs> not going to bother to catch a sugar glider. Indeed, they're more worried about you know, burning to death here. Wolves. Oh. These pack predators Sheesh. continue to prowl the island in search of food. The glider must remain vigilant if he's to avoid those snapping jaws. Okay. Where can I find us? This is probably a hiding spot. I'm hoping this is. I'm hoping this is a hiding spot. Probably this. This is probably a hiding spot. Okay. The wolf is lying down once more. I'm going to snack. And then we just sprint to it. Uh, it's standing up again. Obviously, it's going to hear me moving, so it's obviously going to be alerted. It's lying down again. I honestly don't know where to go now. Let's see. 
but probably that spot there. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Wolf, there's a fire tornado coming our way. I think you may want to move. I don't think you should be worrying about catching food. I think you should be worrying about becoming a barbecue. Becoming barbecued. Okay, the wolf is still lying down. Just going to run for it. Technically, it was looking in my direction. <laughs> and now, the thing is, we've got to run straight past it. And we all know how good that's going to go. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> Fight the wolf. If I could have, I would have. But I can't, so I shan't. Like, can I make it to this spot or immediately? I don't think so. No, I cannot. Okay, so I've got to go all the way around, unfortunately. Well, we sacrificed our Joey for, for science. All right, let's see here. Is it lying down? It's lying down. Okay. Into the dense... Into the thickets we go. Until it lies down like that. And then we dash to the next spot. Uh, no, okay. It spotted us. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. This may be a while, eh? I wonder whether it can pick me up, pick up that I'm running and that maybe I shouldn't run this first bit. Okay, it's just standing there. Wait for it to lie down once more. Okay. It's still lying down. Okay, run for it! Ah! Yo! Yeah, normally wolves would be thinking about fleeing. It wouldn't. They wouldn't be thinking about having a teeny weeny little snack. This wolf, however, is something different. It just wants to eat. Clearly, it is the uh, the season where there is not a lot of food available. They are. Uh, are craving flesh. Or craving food. Okay, it's lying down again. Not sure whether I've got to wait for him to look the other way. But I don't think that does anything. No, it, it is just looking this way. I just have to stop moving immediately. The moment I see a bit of red on the screen, I've got to stop moving. So yeah, I think I've got to, uh, Nick, in, uh, in regarding taking it slowly, I've got to dash between these clumps. Because I have to cover that gap quite quickly. I've got to dodge or, you know, uh, go from cover to cover. But in here, I should not be running. I should be taking things slow. Now, I will need to run and stop. Because if it didn't sp spot me, you know, with sight, it would be relying on hearing. And if I'm not moving, I'm not making sound. So, it would make sense that maybe he wouldn't be able to, to find me. 
but they also would have an amazing sense of smell. So he would be able to smell me though. But what we are doing is we are... There we go. I think we did it. I think this is what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to be running straight past it. We are supposed to... Yeah, move along the side here where it's nice and safe. That's what we should have been doing that... What we should have done that first time around. Bye, Mr. Wolf. Hopefully we won't see you again. Let's see here. Oh. Okay, probably have to head over there now. And then from there... Up there somewhere. Yeah. There we go. Okay. A whole bunch of rats trying to escape also here. Interesting. Uh, hopefully the rats are not going to be eating or trying to eat me. Hopefully they are... Yeah, they're, they're just trying to escape. They are not too bothered about eating me. That's true, Agaliki. Maybe you can't smell me with the fire. With all this the smoke of ash and fire. Because fire does have quite a pungent scent to it. Quite a pungent smell. Oh, there goes the vulture. Oh! Okay, here comes the bearded vulture. Eee. We've got to try and make our way through. Oh ho 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 ho. Come on, little one. Run! Mash, mash, mash. I, lo I love how we are battling, battling, battling to opening this, to open this up. And the vulture just, just go, kind of goes, Meh, and opens it up. No problem. And he's just like a serial killer stalker in a movie, eh? Just like, stalk, 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 stalk. Okay. Why are you stopping? Oh, such a beautiful bird, though. Really, really such a beautiful bird. Okay. I'm guessing we're going along here. And I'm guessing it's going to pop up in a moment again. The island is rife with predators and infernos. Mm -hmm. The sugar glider can only hope his keen instincts oh, are no. in the final stretch. Hide from the wolves. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, so now we've got to make sure they don't spot me. There's one that is patrolling and one that is lying down. The wolves are closing in. The glider must be ever on his guard. Using his instinct is going to help him find the... Oh my word, okay. ...to stay out of sight. Okay. We're going to go straight to where that wolf is. Surely that wolf will hear me. The other one is moving, so we should be able to make it. Yeah, we made it. We're in the hiding spot. But there's another wolf right there. This is going to be d difficult. Because we all know how it went the previous time around. I think now is my chance. Yeah, that wolf hasn't spotted me. The other one isn't here yet. Oh, 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 oh. went straight past me. Just going to remain in this little thicket. Okay, now, the thing is, we've got to make it to that thicket there, but we've got to wait for that one wolf to be far away. So we first have to wait for him to pass. Hello there. 
And now, how far are you? You're not very far. Oh, shall we risk it? Let's risk it. Nobody coming after us, no. Okay, so we, we're in the clear, or in this case, in the thicket. It's good. Good, 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 good. Now, where to now? Probably will have to head in that direction, straight where the wolf is coming from. There he comes. Okay. As the determined glider travels forward, surmounting the seemingly insurmountable, our hopes travel with him. Mm -hmm. His journey to save his family <laughs> is our Run. journey as well. The future of life on Earth could depend on what we learn from this tiny sugar glider's trials and triumphs. Godspeed, young Joey. Godspeed. Okay. And into this thicket we go. We are fine. Okay, now, oh, we're not in the thicket. We should be in the thicket. There we go. Oh, we're going to have to run. We're going to have to wait for this wolf to be at the furthest point away from where we are. Not now, in other words, because there he is. Going to come past. And when it is as far away as possible, we're going to have to run for this little thicket. Okay, we made it. Oh, that's not too bad. Now, next one is just up ahead. Oof. Yeah, we made it to here. Okay. Great stuff. Here comes the wolfie. There's another wolf that's standing right there. Now we've got to time it past two wolves. This one is lying down again. Okay. Now right by this wolf. We've got to wait for that other one to also come past once more. Oh, I agree, Agaliki. The suspense is killing me too. Here comes this one. He's been killing a few things. And run and hide. Okay, he is alert. Oh, here comes that second one, eh? Okay, we are fine. Where to? There to. Okay. Oh, there's another one coming up. Trying to find... Oh, here comes that one wolf. Ah, ha, ha. Ooh, he looked right at me. And now he is standing right there. Okay, I've got to wait for him to move. Go on, little wolfie. You don't... This is not the... Not the most superior you're looking for. Okay. You're not hearing anything. No human has set foot on this stretch of Savia Island in decades. Mm -hmm. Disasters caused by the shift made the area inaccessible to researchers. There he goes again. The wolves have become increasingly territorial. They seem to be protecting something, perhaps a recent kill. Their presence is a problem for the sugar glider, who must find a way to make it past these hmm. snarling carnivores in one piece. Mm -hmm. I hear him. Oh, there he goes. Okay, I don't know where the others are, because I have to wait for my... Oh, I'm hungry, that's why I'm struggling. Okay. I'm just going to run for it. Okay. Made it here. Great stuff. Oh, here comes another one past. Ho, ho, ho. That was close. I think we've got to wait for that one to come past once more. Sure. There he is. He's standing right up there. Just going to wait for him to finish his patrol. Of course, wolves and most predators are extremely pred uh, territorial. Predatorial. Uh, uh, territorial. Because they have to defend an area. He'll need food. And soon, if he's to succeed on this quest. But it's a little bit difficult to get food, Mr. Narrator, because the wolves are in the way. Ah, here's something. 
I can eat this. There we go. That's something. Oh, my health has dropped. That's a bit of a problem. Okay, here comes the wolf. Let's just wait for him to go past. And then we'll just quickly munch. Munch on some stuff. Come on. Munch it. Don't want to be eaten by the wolf, please. Okay, run and hide. Okay, I think... Oh, ho, 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 ho. I think we're fine. Yeah. We do need to make it past these wolves, though. Are there something else to eat right here? Great stuff. Just going to wait for the wolf to come trotting past once more. Here he comes. Okay, and we've got a dash to the other side here. Hopefully we can make it. Oh, uh, no, we couldn't. Oh, man. I hope I don't have to go too bad, too far again. Please, 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 not, not too far. Uh, I don't know how far back we are, but I think we're all right. Oh, 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 oh I almost ran. There's a wolf right here. Okay. We need to get here. Okay. An unusual species ah. of oak marked by the presence of numerous <coughs> mushrooms. Hmm. Could this be the Quercus fungi, or mushroom oak, spoken of by missing researcher Apwiti Hamilton? If so, we could be on the verge of a monumental discovery. Hmm. Yeah, so Quercus is the genus name of oaks. Uh, not sure why it would be called Quercus fungi. Um, doesn't really make sense, but anyway. Uh, let's see, where are we supposed to go? appear to be some bracken fern here. No, not bracken fern. This appears to be some kind of bamboo or palm. Uh, can we climb this? I wonder. No. Not that, at least. Can we climb this? No. Okay. We can't climb it, which means we've got to find another way. Maybe there's a way in the... Un yeah, there's a way through the undergrowth. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Also, now at least I learned, I, I now know what happens if you don't eat anything. You start losing health. Good to know. It's possible this mushroom oak may be the only one of its kind. Ish. And it's on fire. Mm. As its bark burns from the heat, our hopes of studying this rare tree burn up as well. The situation couldn't be more dire for the young glider. His family is stuck high in the branches of that smoldering oak. But our Joey is undeterred. <laughs> he searches for a safe path forward, steadfast in his quest to rescue the ones he loves. Let's see. All these little clovers appear to be three-leaf clovers, no four-leaf clovers. No luck on them, I'm afraid. Uh, now, the thing is, the, the narrator here says this is now the end for this oak. Not necessarily. If it is anything like the cork oak, Quercus uh, super, then it is going to do quite well despite the fire, or actually because of the fire. Because they have got very, very thick bark that's able to withstand this inferno. So maybe this oak also has a bark that is able to withstand the fire and actually acts as a fireproofing around the more vulnerable bit of the stem. Because this outer bark doesn't matter if that gets damaged. This outer bark is it's dead, it's not alive. It's the inner bark that needs to be protected. And the inner section of the tree that may be more vulnerable. Not completely the inside, because that's also dead. But the inner bark definitely has to be protected. And maybe this is actually thick enough, this outer bark, to keep it safe with a fire. And actually protect the inner bark in that way. So, may not be the end for this Quercus fungus. And I know the narrator said Quercus fungi, but it should actually be Quercus fungus. Uh, you know, uh, Latin and masculine and feminine words. Quercus fungus. Also, fungi is plural, and that's not what we are looking for. Um, okay, I've got to find a way to get onto that 
swinging branch and I thought maybe I will be able to... No, okay, I'm gonna die. Fiery Inferno! Well, that's a new death. <laughs> okay, uh, can I make it? No, no, I cannot. Fiery death! <laughs> oh, man. Uh... No! Fiery death number three. Like, imagine I'm not supposed to go that way, but I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to go that way. Okay, here we go. No! I should probably just keep on gliding and I may be able to make it that way. Let's see. Let's see one more time. Okay, I overshot it. Can you believe it? That's five, I think. Five deaths. Five fiery deaths. Maybe as it is reaching, reaching this point, I need to jump. Oh, almost made it. Six. Yeah, we're in a, in a big barbecue here, everybody. No, I should not have dipped. Okay, seven. Okay, let's bet on how many times I will still going is will still going to die. That's at least once more, so that's eight eight times already. And oh yes, yes. Okay, so eight. Oh wow. Well, okay, now we need to continue jumping. Yeah, I'm going to just swing on the vine, swing on the branch, and then just do that. Because that is much safer than trying to jump and glide. Much, much safer. Okay, here we go once more. Okay, righty. Yay. Okay. It was just that one that really, 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 really got me. <laughs> Let's see. You can see here some of the thicker or oh, sections with thicker bark where it hasn't completely burned. It's really only some of the bark that has burned. Okay, I wonder why we're heading to that branch. Is that where our mother and sister is? Interesting. No, this is not the place you want to be if you are little Joey. Can I eat this? Yes, I can. Not sure whether this is a lichen that I'm eating here, but it's cool. Um, oh, I'm supposed to head in that direction. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, injured, but I'm alive. Avoid the superheated bar. No, really? <laughs> you know, I was thinking I should run on it, Mr. Narrator. Captain Obvious. Okay. Now, where to? Probably there. And there we go. Wow. Butterfly, fly away! You're not supposed to be here. Okay, well, now I can't eat you. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I can jump to there. And then... No, I don't want to jump to the butterfly. Well, I'm going to jump to the butterfly, apparently. Come on, Mr. Joey. Really? Well, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Like, I should be able to switch, you know, between the butterfly and the branch, whatever I want to go for. But, yeah. Went for the butterfly. Couldn't get onto the branch. Now we'll see. Okay. Please. I don't want to catch butterflies. I'm fighting for my life here. I can eat lichens if I have to. Ow, that hurt. Okay, I think... I've got to glide over. There we go. 
made it. Okay, I jumped to the top one. I jumped far. Sure. Okay, well, we're getting closer to the end, I guess. To the, well, to the top of the tree, at least. Who knows what lies in store for our little Joey. After this tree, though. As we try to find a path up. You can see a whole bunch of... These are typical bracket fungi that have erupted from the, from the tree. They've been growing as mycelial network in the tree, decomposing it slowly. And now it's bearing fruit. Uh, interesting, though, that some oak species actually appear to have a semi-mutualistic relationship with uh, fungi, where the fungus will decompose the inside of the tree, the dead wood on the inside. And in the process, then the tree kind of gets hollowed out. And during massive windstorms, for example, it isn't actually able to survive quite well, uh, because a rigid stem will mean that you break very easily. Whereas a more flexible stem, you know, when there's harsh winds, a more flexible stem, like hollowed out stem, will mean that you can actually bend when the strong winds are blowing. I just need to figure out, we jump from there, I think we need to jump onto that now. Yeah. Just might need to make sure that I head to the right spot. But it's quite possible that this fungus here is one of those that actually, uh, really? Anyway, as I was saying, it's quite possible that this fungus is actually growing on the inside, hollowing out this oak tree, and it is now able to bend in the in the wind. If there are massive storms, for example. Okay, now let's try to jump onto that without, you know, falling off again afterwards. There we go. That's the way we like it. Dum, 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 dum. They really got the bark of an oak tree right as well, eh? This is really, really well done. In this case, the tree itself is actually quite well done. With the fire and everything burning into a crisp. Uh, I'm just trying to think what would be the best way to go. Probably gliding onto this. What? No! Okay, maybe not gliding onto that. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, oh, I think I'm where I'm supposed to be. Oh, this is where I was. Okay, 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 okay. I can make this. Now, where to? Hmm, maybe I need to jump there. No, okay, never mind. I stopped. I should actually just keep on gliding. The thing is, I think that I I keep on thinking. Oh, wait, maybe I should go there. No, maybe not. Mm. No, maybe not there. Okay, just had to try. Let's see. I really thought I was supposed to head down, but I technically should be finding a way up, right? Rather than down. Now, if we just go into photo mode here and just quickly check. Technically, I think we need to go in that direction. Right there. So for that, we are here. <laughs> uh, this, this feels like cheating, but it's the best way to go about doing this. We need to get onto those things there, which is, I guess, from where we are... I don't think we should be heading onto that branch there. I think we should be heading down. But I'm not 100% sure. Okay, okay, I don't know. I think okay, I got this escape. That's all right. Okay. Maybe I should just jump and glide and see if I get it. No, I missed. I overshot. This little sugar glider is definitely determined, but it's not a very good determined, I'm afraid. Because, nope, missed that one again. Okay. Whee! Thankfully, we are at the spot where we 
can have actually saved. Now the thing is, it is constantly pointing me in that direction. Like, why? I don't want to go there. I want to go down here. Nope. Clearly not that way. Maybe if we just jump in this direction and blindly fall? No, still not. Okay. Maybe we just... Okay, no, it's, see, they, it kills us before we even hit the branch. Which means this is not the way. I don't know where is the way, but it's not there. Um, anywhere else we can go? I don't think so. Like, we came from here. So surely... We sh yeah, we should be on this. But then where to from here? There's no way up there. That will kill us. There's no way for us to glide in that direction. Because we keep on missing that bracket fungus over there. We die before we reach that branch. Only thing I can think of is that we are supposed to head over here. But you see, there we're dead already. Before we even make it. Unless we are supposed to jump onto that swinging log and jump down. Ow. The log that I think we just jumped off from. Maybe we are supposed to be on it. Oh! Why did it kill us? We didn't touch anything. Really? Come on. Like, this little sugar glider is determined, but it is constantly injuring itself and dying. Okay. Come on. Like, it kills us again. We should be fine there, but we're not. Are we supposed to be up here? No, because that kills us. I honestly don't know where we are supposed to go from here. Instincts? That's showing us we should jump into the log over there. It's obviously not right. Can we jump onto that log without dying? Nope, there we are dead before we even get close to the log. We're not supposed to be doing that. Supposed to jump to the bracket fungus with a bunch of the small blue fungi. So that that is that one that we are trying to get to. Okay, well, we got there. <laughs> uh, okay, let's try this again. Like my little guy is already spawning with fire on him. Okay. There we go, okay. Like, considering how many times I tried to get here, I didn't think I was supposed to get here. Come here, but okay. Good to know. Thanks for that, Am I Menacing? Appreciate it. <laughs> because that was getting just way too frustrating. But there we go, okay. Now we're getting there. Okay. The top of the tree. Oh. The glider's mother and sister. They're still alive. But so is the vulture. Oh no. Quite a thin beak that the bearded vulture has, similar to the other, or its closest relative, which is the. The, uh. Oh, okay. Malay to attack, bash to attack, okay. Uh, its closest living relative is actually the Egyptian vulture, which looks very, very similar in its beak. Or is very similar in beak structure. 
Okay, are we really going to take try to take down a big bearded vulture? Like this? Why? Okay, these things... Oh, wow. Okay. No, you're not gonna eat us. Oh, wow. Okay. Mother to the rescue. Sheesh. Mother is vicious. Keep attacking. And mash, 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 mash. Mother and son working together. And here we go. Tag team. Oh, no, it's managed to get shot. Okay. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. And now it's got mother on its head and young one in its claws. Well, now, let's try that again, shall we? We are here at least. This is obviously the big show showdown. Okay, here we come. Come and come at me. They've got incredibly strong wings, which they, in this case, would be using to actually beat us potentially to death. There have been records of bearded vultures uh, killing pigeons and some other birds with, uh, with their wings, actually just like beating them to death with their wings, which I think is quite amazing. And not something I anticipated from a bearded vulture. As I said, by far the majority of their food, 99%, up to 99% of their food, actually consists of bones or bone marrow, not little creatures like this. Those bones and stuff don't actually fight back. Unlike these little guys. These little guys are fighting back to the death here. We call the bearded vulture because of those little hairs, those little feathers that are sticking out from its beak. Which is why it is called the bearded vulture. Mother! Come back, mother! No! Mother! Oh no. And so Aww. the mighty bearded vulture falls into the flames, and with it, our Joey, beloved Aww. mother. And sister also. Glider's sister still lives. If the Joey moves quickly, he may yet be able to rescue her. Mm-hmm. And off we go. I'm guessing somewhere where there isn't fire. Like here. Maybe. Oh no. Well, that's unexpected. Hang on, little sister. No. Sheesh. Okay. Sanctuary Beach. Peace returns for a time to Saviour Island. The Joey and his sister rest and recover on the shore to the rhythmic sounds of the waves. Hmm. Though the glider has suffered a great tragedy in the loss of his mother, he has gained strength and resolve beyond his years. Having surmounted innumerable hardships against all the odds, our Joey must once hmm. again muster his courage and face whatever challenges the island has in store. His sister is relying on him after all, and he will not let her down. As this remarkable animal gazes out towards the horizon, the rising sun offers hope for a new nest, a new home. 
and a new dawn for us all. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's nice. Interesting that the sister and the male that we've been playing with, or playing as, they're the same age. It's very, very interesting that she is so much smaller than us. But that is most likely because we have been running around eating while the sister has been carried around by a, by a vulture and not eating. So, uh, yeah, with, uh, with us getting food and our sister not getting food, I think that is a, a re the reason why we are much bigger than her. Now, we need to most likely find some kind of place where there's a nice little hole in a tree. So this tree almost looks like it could potentially have a nest or a hole in it, but it doesn't look like it. The whole bunch of spiders around here. We are just going to run to try and find a new nest. As we do so, hopefully, hopefully we'll find a nice, nice nest. Now these little ones definitely had it rough. Now the thing is, uh, it looks like that this tree over here could have a nice nest. I think it's hopefully there are more sugar gliders because otherwise, yeah, if we, these two are the only two that are around, then there's going to be a bit of a population bottleneck here due to genetic inbreeding. Ah, there we go. There's a nice spot for these little sugar gliders to, to have a nest and to roost. It looks just like the home at the beginning of the, of the uh, game. Hopefully, no more storms. I don't really hear any sound at the moment, though, interestingly enough. Okay. So I guess now that Sister has reached a nice spot here, we can explore whenever we want to. And I think that is also where we are going to end tonight's session, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, for, for the questions and for comments and for just having a nice relaxing time with us. Uh, next week, Nick and I will be back and we'll be playing Pell World again next Sunday. And then the week thereafter, we'll be back in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. And of course, as always, this coming Friday, there will be another Avatar Frontiers of Pandora video coming out as well, which I am going to basically record now. So hope you all have a lovely weekend further and an amazing week ahead. And we will see you all next week. Until then, everybody, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>